Welcome to Four Player Podcast episode. Greetings, motherfucker. Four hundred and seventy-two. Greetings, Brad. My name is Nick Henderson. Uh, that was Brad Simons. I'm who just, just excited. Sorry. It, why are you excited? Because we started the podcast. Really. Oh, that's always a it's always <laughs> reason for excitement. Uh, joining us this week and on the other couch, actually the other couch entirely is different. I swear to God, we will eventually we will eventually have the regular <laughs> four. People no, together on the couch oh, again. Dear. Don't lie. It's been like six weeks, and every single week something happens. Nolan is Nolan just got married last weekend, so he is off on he's in Greece. Yeah, belated congratulations to him for me. He is he is in Greece I celebrating think, his marriage. I think Chris Davis is slowly poisoning our fourth chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Crispy is out this week, so in his place we have good friend of the show Jack Claxton. Hello, welcome back. Hi, hi, hi. How are you? Good. It's always a pleasure to have you here. He's British. It's he always is, good to have you. He is British. Do you still see yourself as a British person, or do you see yourself as an American? I thought he was going to say it's since a, the Brexit thing, are he's you a British, British American, or are you <laughs> European? <laughs> are you European or no. British? You're neither I'm, European. I'm 100 British beef. Okay. Yes, sir. Gross. Okay. Uh, and also, of course, filling out the, uh, the the second couch is Christopher Davis. That's me. And uh, we have. We have stuff to talk about this week. We have video games. I think there's a few there's a few uh, housekeeping items I would like to point out. One of which being, I think this is the biggest piece of news. We just we briefly mentioned it last week after the podcast recording had ended, but uh, next week, next uh, weekend actually, is TwitchCon in San Diego, and Brad and myself Woo! will be in attendance at TwitchCon, TwitchCon. for a day. <laughs> Four day. We're gonna be we're gonna be in Twitch we're gonna be at TwitchCon on Saturday, October first. Uh, Brad is gonna be participating in the Twitch OG panel. Oh jeez, oh jeez. He is he is an OG. So are you, Nick? You're an OG. I'll be there. But from... they can only have one representative of four player podcast. I will be... With this whole like new Twitch generation or whatever you want to call it, you guys are gonna be like the grandpa dinosaurs of the whole month, right? I mean, that's essentially what the whole panels of four basically right yeah, yeah I mean, that's just yeah. more or less like like last year they did it and, and they were like wait where's four player podcast and i was like we didn't get the fucking <laughs> well we did this year so, so. we are we, brad will be on the panel i will be there for moral support uh we'll probably be there for until mid-afternoon or so before we have to catch our flight so if you happen to be in san diego Ooh. and you're going to TwitchCon, yeah. first of all come to the panel It'll be fun. I I'm sure be... Carlos will be there. I'm he sure says Carlos... he's, He says he's on his he way. He's on his way. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said, ow, oh, my wiener. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, Brad will be there on, on the panel, so come check it out. I'll be somewhere in the audience. Who else is on that panel, Nick? Uh, Swifter and Chingy, and I think Dance Gaming is on there. Man and vs. Game. Man vs. Game. And I think it's it's a lot, a lot of people. Some other, go well, a couple of other people. And four players. Like, I, apologize. I, I think it's like seven people. That's off the top of my head, so I apologize if I left any. If I, I'm, I know I left some people out, but it'll be a good lethal fun, frag. Lethal frags on there. It'll be a good fun time, I think. Um, so if you're in San Diego, if you're going to TwitchCon, come check out the panel. I think it's 10 a.m. on Saturday, uh, October 1st. So come check check it out. Come say hi to me and Brad. We'll be there for a short period of time, but we will be there nonetheless. <laughs> It's gonna. <laughs> Craig on, Craig's on there, of course. Yeah, of course. Wait, did I not say Craig? I don't know. Craig's gonna be there. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. Um, um, everyone's gonna be there. Every everyone under the sun. If you're is an going OG, to be there, which we are, we are the the oest of G's, right? Uh, the oest of the G's. I don't know. Something I mean, like that. There's not more like O. G than, than, oh. than us, Nick. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So come check it out. Point of the story. Come check it out. It's 10 a.m. October 1st. Uh, it'll be streaming on Twitch as well, I believe. Uh, so check that out. But if you happen to be at the convention itself, come to the panel. Come say hi. We'd love to see you. Um, I also want to talk about... We're a little late getting the uh, the uh, giveaway for the month underway. Last last week, we did announce the winner of our, our giveaway, which we gave, we ended up giving away a copy of Deus Ex Mankind Divided to Piosht. Piosh is now happily Rigged. playing Deus, Deus Ex. <laughs> Why? He he participated in the giveaway. I drew his name at random. Not rigged. Um, so we're gonna do a, we're doing something a little different um, with the next giveaway. I think this is because it's so late in September. We're probably gonna run this through October. But uh, we have we have two copies of Shadow Complex on disc. Trash. 
for PS4. What? Limited <laughs> edition. I don't know Limited edition don't PS4. I don't know if we're going to give away both. We're going to give away at least one of these. This gets the official... I think it depends on how, on the amount of interest we get. Only 6,000 copies of this were printed. Only 6,000 copies I will were say, Shadow Complex gets Brad's official quality Metroidvania seal of approval. Yes, it does. Is that it, by Limited Run? I mean, yeah. not a, yep. there's a lot of Metroidvanias out there that try to live What's up it? to the Metroid name, to the Castlevania name, and uh, but not many get the official seal of approval. Thank you, Jaeger. And Shadow Complex definitely does. Thank you, Jaeger, for pointing out that we're 23 days late on the <laughs> on the giveaway. But you know what? We're going to make up with it. We got a limited uh -huh. print copy of Shadow Complex for PS4 on disc. We're going to give that away. I'm going to update the site tonight or tomorrow morning so y'all can see that. But the point is, all you have to do to enter the giveaway, as usual, is retweet our podcast and they go up on Twitter, leave a comment on the show after we post them, um, and uh, submit a quick read article if you have something you want us to post on the site. Any one of those things will get you entered in the drawing. You can get your name entered up to three times per giveaway. Which, if you like... Boop, but if bumps you like, up your chances. I will sign it. Brad will sign it. <laughs> as as I, my official seal of approval for a quality Metroidvania that lives up to the genre. I, well, I mean, don't you want... Will not sign it. We should probably keep it shrink wrap though. We can... You gotta sign the shrink no, wrap. No, no, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> I'm gonna sign the shrink wrap, so if they don't want it, they can just open it. <laughs> you, or, can, you can mock up a uh, or Brad just, certificate of approval. Or you can literally just say, when we pick the winner, hey, would you like me to open the shrink wrap and sign the, the box? No, it'll be a sticker head. We'll, we'll get a sticker made of my, of my head. You're going to slap a sticker on there? Or like two golden thumbs up or some cheese. Yeah, shit. exactly. It's a bratty mode. That would, that would be weird. Okay. Anyways, that's going to be our giveaway. Probably running through October. Uh, like I said, two copies of Shadow Complex on PS4. Physical limited edition prints of the game. Just got to contribute to the just, site. Just got to contribute. Advice for life. Yes. It's good relationship advice. Contribute. Anyways... Um, let's kick the show off, guys. We're gonna Jack's, Jack's been talking a little bit about Final Fantasy VI in a bit because you've been playing Final Fantasy VI. Before we get Final to Final Fantasy Three, Nick. I'm sorry. No, Jack, <laughs> no. no. Let's no. save that debate for a little for a little bit later. How's it even a debate? It's not a debate. Uh, it's a fact uh, of life. Got him. I don't know. All right. Uh, so I want to kick the show off as usual with a few comments from last week's episode. Uh, we talked about a lot of different shit last week. Last week we talked more about the PS4 Pro. We talked about Legend of Zelda because Crispy was playing uh, Link to the Past. Um, but our first comment this week comes down comes from Kenton. This is this PS4 Pro thing is continuing to. Oh, Jack hasn't had a chance to chime in on the PS4 Pro, so maybe this is your opportunity. We well, last time we did this, we t were talking about it again for 20 minutes. Okay, not gonna let that happen. <laughs> but I did. I did want to read Kenton's comment. He says, "I feel like it goes down if it goes down the phone route, which is one thing a lot of people right. are saying." Um, with every year being some form of upgrade, then it's beneficial to wait every two years to get whichever increment you want. The iPhone 6 versus the iPhone 7 really isn't a big difference, uh, where a real difference would be between, say, an iPhone 6 and an iPhone 8. Wow. Yeah, but that's only really like two years apart. Sure. Which or I think two to three well, years. Yeah, I think the... I think the estimate here is they're going to be doing this every two years if they're really going to continue doing this. But... So if you, if you wait... But if the, you did the, that, if the you skip a generation, is, you'd be waiting... For a lot of the difference years. is we're not upgrading our phone. We're upgrading our phones because within our contract, it's more or less just time to get the better phone, you know. But but our, our urge to like want to upgrade consoles is because, hey, the last Guardian kind of runs like shit, but it doesn't actually run so shitty on this new yeah, one. Yeah, and that's kind of you know, that's not how really it works with phones. Yeah, and I mean his comment so kind of touches on that too. He says, "I feel like you'd get more bang for your buck if you're doing that." Uh, rather than buying the new model every year, unless consoles went down the route like an iPhone, where it's you, they give you a, like you have a contract and they they give you an update like a sure, discounted that's, that's, that's not gonna happen. that's never gonna happen. I'm I'm pretty sure. Um, Scarecrow said, um, "Y'all mentioned on the podcast, but a link between worlds might be the best place to start off with Zelda because we were talking about um, Link to the Past and where's the great." The next, I guess, the next logical step. Yeah, we, why had that, we had that with. conversation when I was done my first Zelda too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Link to the Past is the best to start because I think the, a lot of the the one that, the other one that a lot of people go to was like Ocarina of Time, but Ocarina of Time Ooh. is an early 3D game, and that is actually has more hurdles to get into it than like a Link to the Past does. Wind Wake would be a much more suitable choice next to Link to the Past. Well, that's funny because his, his well, actual see, question... That, that runs in the... Scarecrow's actual question was, 
because uh, he said that he jumped into Link Between Worlds and that was what got him started in the oh, series. Link but he Worlds. says oh, yeah. he's unsure where the best place to start off with a 3D Zelda would uh, be. You know, they, they just did that Twilight Princess HD on, on the Wii U. Um, and then, of course, you know, the, the, the problem with... I would go Twilight Princess. Or, or if you have a 3DS, get the Ocarina of Time on there. Yes. Uh, but but, but it's, because honestly, Wind Waker three, has... All three it's of the major like 3D Zelda Zelda's, games. though, but all three of the major 3D Zeldas now have a, in my opinion, a superior version on more yeah, modern consoles. Yeah. The Twilight Princess HD uh, game version on, on Wii U is actually really good, along with the, the Wind, Wind Waker, Waker HD, right? yeah, is say. incredible. But, and Ocarina of Time on 3DS is one of the best Zeldas I've ever played. But Wind Waker is, is I think, the most device, devi- well, there's Majora's Mask, but Wind Waker is also very divisive, like Majora's Mask, because if, if that... If the sh- the boat, the sailing around the world, the mostly water, like if that doesn't grab you, like a lot of people get kind of turned off by that. Yeah, you know. Oh, no, that's, that's and plus, it's got that fucking Triforce quest and the least amount of dungeons. Which we we talked about last week, but is also better in the. Yeah, yeah no, as no, someone that's going through my first Zelda being Wind Waker, I, I'm not too far. Did out, you finish the Wind no, Waker? No, I've got. I won't be playing the GameCube. I remember. Oh fuck! Yeah, I, what I, are I've, you doing? So. Admittedly, I hadn't touched too much of it, but I got the um, three pearls. I got the master sword, and I've met the. Well, I saw the statue of what looked like, I guess, the Ocarina of Time Link, and everything was like sepia yeah. toned. Yeah, and then yeah. I did the puzzle under, with the, under the, under the ocean. Thing. That's where I'm at, basically. Under the sea. Yeah, I mean, you got you got plenty Spoiler. to go. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving it. I think it's really good. That it, it is really good. Just. But you're playing the GameCube version. I guess I, guess I went in with. You're some gonna hit a quest already, that you're gonna you know? hate. Well, maybe you won't hate it. You're. Well, I like it. I mean, I, I play old games, so I... I, I yeah, can... there's just one quest in particular that everyone wants. Do you like fishing like, in the game? It's a fucking road. With the throwing the bait and stuff? Yeah. It takes all of about two seconds to do. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't the Triforce me. quest takes more than two seconds. You'll yeah. See. yeah. But, but I've been playing with my girlfriend because she's been kind of like guiding me through it because honestly, if I get stumped on something, I don't really want to be spending hours trying to find out where to go or whatever. Now, that's going to be what you're going on about, you know, without that guide kind of thing. Uh, also, Kenton wanted me to point out to you another part of his comment, which I didn't put in here, but Chris Davis, you apparently can't pronounce... Well, I'm not even going to say it. I can't pronounce it either. Musso. 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 Well, I was calling it Musso. Mu- yeah, no, it's Because I've never been corrected Musso. about it. You know, okay. I was fucking thinking about this the other day. You know how, like, Musso games in Japan are, like, they take any popular IP and then they turn it into a fucking Musso game? Like, Telltale is the Musso games of the West. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Where it's I mean, all the same narrative shit. narrative perspective, yeah. But, but, but then they just get whatever popular IP out there and morph it into like, you know, a Telltale game. And it's the same shit every fucking time. Now they're doing Batman. They're going to well, do the, a Marvel one. They're going to do a... The only difference I would say there is that other than just those two seasons of The Walking Dead, they really don't have like anything that's specifically their own IP. They're always adapting other people's when... Yeah. Well, when Walking Di- they Dead got Di- is, is not their own Well, idea. Mega Force has Dynasty Warriors. They have Samurai Warriors. They have... Well, uh, well they I mean, I mean Telltale did their own shit before. Others. Well... But they haven't branched out yet post in the post-Walking Dead world and done something completely original. Yeah. I guess they never really did. They always kind of used licensed stuff. Yeah. They did the Sam Max games. Yeah. The A uh, couple more comments. I'm going to rattle off here. Uh, four, fourth Horseman says... Uh, been hearing a lot of good things about Attack on Titan, and if it, if all of that hadn't sold it for me yet, Crispy's "She's pretty hot. She's also she also has no skin." Certainly did it for me. <laughs> um, and Haste pointed out to me because I had, I, I I had almost shamefully likened Recore's color coded system, color coded combat system to Devil May Cry Three. What? I mean, I had I had mentioned. I had I had drawn a loose comparison, not at all. I'm glad okay. I didn't catch that. Let me <laughs> let me, <laughs> let me read the let me read the comment. It says Nick, you referred to um, uh, the key, what is it? The key difference is that in Devil May Cry three, you could potentially defeat any enemy or boss in any way using cunning or by simply being a stubborn lunatic, like me. Uh, what makes DMC 3s combat so interesting was that even in situations where bullshit was happening, like Arkham's Arkham's Jelly Blob battle, was that in what? What the fuck is he talking what? about? I don't know what the Jelly Blob battle you're referring to is, but then again, I haven't played the game in a hell of a long time. Um, there were times when I truly felt like the combat was a custom experience that I could tailor to my own style. Yeah, for um, sure. Which, you know, 
I, I, I had only loose, I had loosely drawn the comparison just because you're constantly, in, in Recore, at least the parts that I have played thus far, they're constantly like switching colors and forcing you to change back and forth between the different color code, uh, color attacks in order to defeat the enemies. Yeah. In DMC or in Devil May Cry, I'm sorry, Devil May Cry Three. They're not. They're not I'm sorry. I know. I know. Uh, and actually, that actually would be more a more relevant comparison. DMC, not Devil May Cry Three, because they actually did have the color coding thing. In DMC, they had the the red enemies and the blue enemies, and you were constantly having to switch back and forth between your angel and devil fighting styles. You know what I'm talking no, about? No, you're thinking of I think Lords of Shadow. No, I'm talking about DMC. Ninja Theory is DMC. Well, Lords of Shadow literally had like the red mode and blue mode. So did DMC. You had an an- you had a- you had you had like your angel, the angelic and the demon. angelic and your demonic. Yeah, but they would red all they would all do damage to. Yeah, but you would do a hell of a lot more damage if you chose the right fighting style. But De- Devil May Cry three doesn't really isn't really necessarily the best comparison because yes, you're you can literally switch fighting styles on the fly, and it really has no impact on whether you're dealing more damage it's just are you better at using that particular fighting style or or not yeah and it you know obviously it, enemies ha- bosses have different attacks and whatnot so i apologize for the somewhat shameful comparison but brad yeah you've been playing more record i have actually been playing more why Recore. don't we talk about in fact Recore. i kind of binged on it a little bit like right after like uh the show last week on friday it was gonna be the game i was gonna play this week but I didn't end up playing much. So yeah, uh, it's funny you were talking about the combat um, because I don't think there's a lot of combat in this footage. I, I don't actually recall, but uh, I've sort of like found uh, a new love for this game. Like like last time we had talked about it, we had not uh, played much of it. We just kind of no. got through the intro yeah, we were- stuff. But like I started playing a lot more of this game. And uh, I really, really like it. And you're still liking it. You, so you haven't finished it yet. Well, no, I have not finished it. I, I, I kind of had one, like, you know, five to six hour session with it. Uh, but And then I've been so busy since then, I've not been able to pick it up and play it again. Um, I did get Duncan. He's the third robot. But I'm actually just... That's the third orb, actually? Yeah. yeah the third. You're, you're playing this on the computer, right? Because I, I remember I saw your tweet that you were having issues... Oh yeah, get but, into, uh, well, figure, not get it run out. or get into buy it or something. Well, you you, you can, oh god, but I, uh, that shit was not, a nightmare. Yeah, but I mean, this is the computer you're playing on, right? Oh, this yeah. is the PC version. By Last the way, week I, I had 360 footage. By the I mean, way, uh, I I think as Xbox of today, the Xbox One has a patch. Is it out? Is it out already? They patched it today. Uh, it supposedly cuts load times pretty much in half. Oh my god, I, you you fast travel so much when you're like exploring the world and like upgrading your guys because you have to go back to your the crawler they call it uh, to upgrade. Uh, your your robots and to, and to like customize and craft the the parts and and build them and stuff, and and you're doing that so much that uh, oh my god I, I could really see how people who are playing the console version with the really bad load times would really really start to hold it against the game yeah like seriously but you know I've not been having those issues because I've been playing on SSD and everything's been actually been quite nice for me and the PC version runs like I. <laughs> I've been playing this game just on. I've been being kind of used to like you know popping in a new game and just setting it to medium and going because you know my graphics card is pretty old. I think I have a 760 in there. It's not, you know that 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 that's like <laughs> that's like below the recommended for this game. But the other day I was like ah fuck it and I set everything to ultra, <laughs> and I just turned off a couple of things and it ran fine. So like the game is actually fairly well optimized and and, and it looks a lot better than. Um, it does uh, on the on the Xbox One, which is weird because it's not like my PC's all that much more powerful than the Xbox One. It's just the Xbox One version has got problems. I don't really understand it. So so this is like a little challenge dungeon, and this is sort of where I've been kind of finding my love for this game. Now you're gonna see some real janky shit. Like look at this. It's a really bad checkpoint. There there <laughs> there, there, there is some in this dungeon where you would just die over and over and over again because of a bad checkpoint. Which fucking sucks, and eventually it'll roll you back or just fix itself. I heard them describing some really weird glitches on the Bombcats. They were talking about some of the stuff, and like they yeah. were even duplicating the glitches over and over no, again. No, like on, it, like I said, those bad checkpoints, you know. But like, look at the shit that I'm doing. Can you think of any modern game which just has pure 
fucking challenging right. platform. Like this is a this fucking looks very platformer. Early, this looks very yeah. early two thousands. It, it, that's fucking great because that doesn't exist anymore, and the shit's fun. <laughs> like the, actually, the the platforming has been such a joy in this game. You have so much control over how she moves because you know you have a double jump and you have your air dash, and if you air dash off a ledge, it doesn't actually count as a, 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 as a dash. Like once you get going in the air, so you can kind of dash. Jump, dash, and, jump. And that's that that's that gaminess that I described last week that oh I was my really God. enjoying. They don't make stuff like this anymore. This this kind of feels like an old old platformer in the best kind of way. And and then and then you blend, you know, an old three D platformer with um with with kind of like Mario sixty four, right? Where you're trying to get these stars and and but you get them in all these different ways. Some what of them are, are challenges they? I know like, not like stars. What are uh, well they're like uh, like special crystal orbs or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, and, and prism, prismatic orbs, and uh, and you even need them. Like towards the end of the game, they start gating your progress if you don't have them. Um, so so I've been oh, go, going cool. around going around the world collecting them and stuff, and I've actually found it pretty satisfying because like Mario sixty four, you know how like oh you know you got to the top of this mountain you get a star or oh you raced a fucking yeah. penguin you get a star. You know there's a lot of variety in how you get them. Same thing here too. And each, each of these dungeons you go to, and I'm going to complete this dungeon relatively soon. Like, you enter this dungeon, it's like there's a timer. There's eight red switches, or eight switches. You, like you, the coins. You need to find and, and shoot with the proper weapon. And then there's a hidden yellow key in each dungeon, too, that you also got to find. That's that's usually trickier, more that's, secret that based, is hard to find. Mario yeah. 64. And, and, and you, you get, like, a reward for each one of them. And, and usually one of them or two of them is a prismatic orb. But if you can do all of those in a single run, you know, get all the switches, find the hidden yellow key, and do it all within the allotted time, you unlock a special uh, reward that you only get, you know, by doing them all at once. And you'll see when I get to the end here, which I'm about to, it kind of you kind of go into the room and it says, oh, well, I wasn't really trying to find all the switches and stuff. Like, oh, you got the one that was the time requirement, uh, but you didn't unlock uh. these. And if you unlock them all, you get the one in the middle, and, and that's often like a cool reward. Usually, like a really awesome like upgrade uh, for uh, one of your robots. Oh, that's cool. Which so is really cool. Like, it's some of that stuff. Like, I found like a rare head. For the dog, that's actually just like a fucking raven head. And it has special loot effects where it doesn't actually boost my stats, but it's like 100% immune to like all status effects. Like there's a, there's a decent amount of depth to the loot and stuff where, uh, you know, when you get like a, a good piece of it, like you really, it really actually kind of feels satisfying. There's also like set bonuses where if you get all the pieces of a certain set, you'll get a bonus to like a stat and, and you know. All the it's shit that's like coming at you it reminds me of Ratchet and Clank. Because I remember when I was, yeah. I was oh, talking yeah. about Ratchet and Clank, I said that the I would. The new one, I, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it's all when, of them. But. When, when recently, when I was talking about the new Ratchet and Clank, how much I liked it, I said that I wish there was more games like that. And we had this conversation about like lack of platformers and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't know nothing about this game. Like This is much more of a platformer than Ratchet and Clank. I, I, I don't know. I've not seen this game. Like ever. I mean, I've heard of the name, obviously, but I've not really watched it or anything. Yeah. It looks pretty awesome. So so here's the crazy thing about this game. And I really kind of like fell in love with it. It's still got its issues, you know. It's still it's still glitchy sometimes. And that, and that's really frustrating. It's rough around the edges. But like this shit is dope. It's fun. It, like like there's not a lot of So the funny thing is like look at the pedigree. You have you have people who worked on Metroid Prime and you have people that worked on like, you know, the Mega Man games back in the day. Those things don't really exist anymore. At least not in any respectable form, right? You know, if you count Federation Force, uh, cool. so so you have this There's thing. The dig. You have this yep. thing that actually feels like these old things that actually used to be really cool. And when I say Mega Man, I'm saying like Mega Man Legends. And and, and, I, and I sort of took a step back and I was like, you know, if this was just like Capcom, uh, and if this was just a Mega Man Legends game, or even like a new Metroid game, and it maybe had the budget that maybe one of those proper games would have gotten or whatever or the or the polish of like a you know a japanese game uh you might actually like like i i could totally buy it and i and like this would make an awesome mega man legends game or an awesome metroid game and, I, and, and I'm, I'm a little frustrated that this game seems like it was kind of rushed out the door that uh you know it has it's having the problems that it's been having because i think this is a like a pretty great start to like something that is unique and kind of fucking awesome and you know even like the story and the characters are pretty cool. Like like I like Jewel as a as a main character and all the robots you get, you know, like that relationship's kind of cool. They they all kind of have their own personalities. They're like they're like pets or whatever, you yeah. know, and 
and they kind of grow on you and and even the combat as simple as it is as frustrated i am with the whole you know sort of pick your color thing as shallow as that feels kind of wish they were like different weapon types or something like it's still pretty fun because it's more uh movement and dodge based than it is just kind of aiming at things and that again that's just a layer of gun combat you don't typically see anymore yeah you know so so it feels fresh it feels unique and i'm just having a lot of fun with this game that i wasn't expecting now i did hear that a lot of people's frustration you know kind of comes towards the end game but a lot of that i hear is with the gating where you're trying to get up through the final dungeon and each you floor stars. you have to unlock you know via stars but the way i'm playing it where i'm kind of exploring and, f and enjoying exploring the world and doing these challenges to get them all i don't anticipate that i'm going to run into too many issues like i'm i feel like i'm already gonna have a bunch of the uh of the orbs that i need i might have to go hunt down some but like i definitely don't mind it now especially when you're backtracking to get these orbs in the late game and you're fast traveling a lot people who play the xbox version i could totally understand why that would really really like be a downer for some people like that can absolutely kill it. i get it i'm not having that issue hopefully that patch fixes it um i definitely recommend getting the pc version if you have a decent gaming pc especially if you're on an ssd just don't you i mean don't don't do it don't do the xbox version well, i will say this on, they were talking about on the bombcast how he went from playing the xbox version to the pc version and duplicated several of the glitches yeah no no like an... this game is kind of fucked in that way yeah. like like if you're a person where glitches can really ruin an experience for you you might have a bad time with record but i would say if you kind of like the look of what you're seeing or you like the idea of a game that doesn't really feel like it feels old it it feels like a game from a different era in the best possible way yeah and maybe some of the bad ways too uh then you know just put up with them because this game's really sounds like you really surprised me i was not this high on it last time i was talking about it and uh you know I, I wish I had maybe finished the game by this point. And well, how much have you I'll talk about at this it point? a little more. Well, he's probably at this point probably like seven uh, or eight probably hours. Probably like eight hours. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm just really like, there's still two more robots I don't even have yet. Uh, one of them's like a flyer, and I've I've seen its kind of Metroidy hook in the world that I, I bet I need to like access. Um, but uh, it sounds like it looks like it's extremely fast and everything. So oh, yeah, like without yeah. trying to like Especially sound like platform. elitist, like PC elitist or whatever, like it sounds like it would really benefit with the mouse just for the. Oh, I'm not. I'm using a controller. This thing wasn't designed for a mouse. Like the way that really? reticle moves around, it swings around with a stick in mind. It's not. It seems like it would have been a lot easier with a mouse, but because you lock on, that's the thing. It's all movement based. That's why you play. You don't need to play it with a yeah, mouse. Yeah, you, you really don't because do because you you don't, you just don't actually. Stop moving, all right? you, you just keep moving. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you don't actually moving. aim. You played a Metro Prime game? I have not. Oh, uh, well, you you uh, you don't actually aim the cursor. I mean, you just hit the left trigger and it locks onto the enemy, and then it's all about kind of moving around, avoiding their fire. But you know, like, like any good, you know, like shooter from the '90s or whatever, the projectile fire from the enemies is slow enough to where it's not like hit scanning you. Right. You have you have the ability to kind of move around and avoid the fire, so it ends up kind of feeling like a like a bullet hell. You know, kind what, of. What thing. is this side character right here? This robot. Uh, this is Max. He's he's the orb that's in my dog. He's like the dog. Uh, I'm just customizing his parts, you know, because there's a, a loot system, uh, but nothing upgrades Jewel. It's uh, are, all your are a robots. A lot of the robot, like a lot of the pieces you put on the robot, are they? Are any of the pieces that you put on the robots purely aesthetic, or are they all uh, give you stat boosts and shit? I mean, it's all it's all tied to stats. It's just like equipment, kind of. It and, is cool and, though. And then you you swap them out and. I do you like know, there's it. a level requirement to. Are there only three them. robots? Or? No, there's, there's five. 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 Okay. five. I, I but I, it's fucking cool. Like, 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 like uh, that. I got that spider bot when you first get him. He has all these parts that make him like this really cute, like little spidery thing. You could barely even tell he's a spider. Oh, that's but, cute. But that's I found adorable. I found a set of equipment, and there's only really like three different styles. I mean, there's a lot of loot, but there's only like three different styles. But I, I got him on a style of of. A set. I equipped a set on him, and he looks like a horrifying spider now. Looks scary and kind of badass. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Well, I, this I, you kind of put me in the mood to play this game again. Um, it's cool, but like I could, I could see you running into some of the issues that I have not 
playing the Xbox version. I mean, that loading is going to kill it. Well, I really they hope say, that, that they, patch they've patched, patched the loading as of today. So yeah, but it's it's when when they say they patched it, it's still going to be. Lot I played The Witcher 3. You're not talking X like original yeah, version one. I played The Witcher 3 on PS4 and I never bitched about the loading, so I think I'll, I think I'll survive. But then again, The Witcher 3 is a game where I didn't die a whole lot and I didn't yeah, fast no, travel. Th a whole this lot. this can be a tough game. So. I, I pretty much physically ran, physically rode everywhere I wanted to go in The Witcher 3. Yeah. I only I probably I probably fast traveled like enough i could probably count on two hands how many times i actually fast traveled while playing i fast traveled a shit ton yeah. so. i hope this game does well you know like fucking art like it's armature i can i can tell you could see armature's dna in this game and, and gross like i don't i mean i know microsoft did a pretty decent job of like marketing it and whatnot but you know the bad reviews and probably like not great word of mouth because of the Xbox version and stuff. Like I, I'm, I'm gonna be really frustrated if um, I'm gonna be really frustrated if this game bombs. It's a lot of verticality. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I'm telling you, like it's fucking great. And I, I'm gonna stick to my statement from last week too. Like, you know, not technically aside. Like let's let's put the technic technic technicality or the technical prowess of the game aside. I think aesthetically, when you're in these outdoor areas, I think the game is actually pretty. I mean, especially when you get into the vertical, ver like the verticality, and you're looking out on like onto the landscapes sure, and stuff. Sure. I think like, like, like the scope's really impressive good. too, but you also got to understand like the environments don't really like they get they get a little samey. Yeah, and like I'm like so, I'm not so, saying so like this look. This is the look of yeah, the game. Yeah, I don't think it's going to like pop up on any like awards no. at the end of the year when it's t we're talking about like best created worlds or whatnot. I'm just saying I think. I think it's not. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's hard on the eyes. If you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying necessarily. I know. I know. Maybe you do, Brad. I think it's a. I think it's a pretty decent looking game. Anyways, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll probably revisit this once or twice. Um, hey, Jack. Yes, sir. How are you? I know you like to play old shit. I like to play old good games, but I do like to play a lot of shit games as well. Oh, yeah. sorry. I did, old stuff. You like to there play we old go, stuff. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what what do you what do you got for us this week? Well, what, what, what is don't the, think of them as old, Nick. They're just games vintage. that you didn't play. Actually, you know what? I Be do need to offer my formal congratulations to you for getting the little Rocket Man. Yes, that is one thing I completely was, forgot about. That was pretty. The impressive. little Rocket Man achievement on Half Life Two Episode Two, carrying that goddamn gnome from the beginning <laughs> of the game to the fucking rocket Guys, ship. It ruins yeah, a great game. That's what it does. It doesn't ruin it. Yeah, ruin it all. I. I went for the fucking gnome achievement in Left 4 Dead 2. Was it Left 4 Dead 2, right? I don't know. I think I did this on the feed. I can't, I can't remember. We were all playing, and I fucking ditched it. We up. got all the way to the very fucking end, like, literally. Yeah, like, I couldn't fucking find it or something. No, no, shit. no. No. Wasn't Travis playing with us? Like, a grenade went off, and we were like, what the fuck? Where's the oh, gnome? Yeah, we turn around, different. and it was on the other side of a fence. That you can't go. <laughs> like, like it was like there's the edge of the world's a fence, and like a grenade went off, uh, like the, with the smoke cleared. It was sitting on the other side of the fence, staring at us, and we're like, we can't get it. There were we can't get the no. What the fuck? <laughs> like I was so pissed. It was also so funny because yeah. that moment when you re when we realized it was just looking at us and we couldn't get to it, like just no clip <laughs> through that son of a bitch. Yeah, and grab it. I, yeah, I wish. Guys, I think I'm ready for a new Left 4 Dead game. Dude, that'd be pretty cool. I think I'm ready, right? Well, we're going to talk about a game that's kind of similar. Okay. Real dose. The Division. He's talking about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's definitely no, no. The Division. <laughs> but uh, no, I completely forgot about the Half-Life 2 thing, but that was... And I did it in like, what, four hours or something? Is what I Do you have to do the whole game? Yes. I can't, How'd you get through Half-Life 2 in four hours? Episode 2. Episode 2. Oh, just episode oh, 2. Oh, okay. Just episode oh, 2. Oh, God, help Dude, us if you had to take... That, carrying that gnome... Oh, at, God, the, at the you, last part. Can you imagine what I'm talking two? about with the helicopters chasing you? Well, you? It doesn't seem like that difficult when you're playing it normally, but there's a part where you're like on, you're in the buggy or whatever, and you, you you're riding around past the train stations and all this shit, and you got a chopper that's on you, constantly dropping bombs, constantly hitting you with machine gun fire that never misses, and you're walking around with the gravity gun and the gnome, you can't outrun it. Yeah, it sucks anus. <laughs> <laughs> it does. But it's can't literally you wedge him into the buggy. <laughs> You can kinda, but the physics do what it, they do what they want. Yeah. Like you get in the car, you move forward, and like you, I've got my mouse pointed down here, so like I'm looking like in the middle console, and the gnome's just like doing this shit. Yeah, just, yeah you you flying you would, around. You would have that feeling every time you hit like a bump, you'd be like, oh god. And it is. And, yeah. right. and there are so many things because is, is he hanging if, on? If I'm not in the buggy, I'm like out with the gravity gun holding it. 
firing it like a couple of hundred feet, running up to it, picking up, <laughs> boom, run, boom, like firing it. You're never terrified you're going to shoot it into, into a place you can't get on accident? I just quick saved the fuck out of that game. <laughs> the str- the str- you are a bigger str- man than I. There, uh, and it was the second time I've actually played episode two. Since it's yeah, episode two's got the f- got those badass hunters in it too. I love those the hun- hunters. Hunters are really good. But but is episode two's the one that ends with like the what is it, the striker striders? The, are you really gonna ask where it the ends strider battle? Yeah, and you're driving around and like shoot like sticking bombs to them. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, that shit frustrated the hell out of me. I don't even know how you play that game again. But the thing is, I didn't actually sad. complete it though. I've got to be honest, I didn't complete. It. I just went up to the rocket, put that thing in, and then as soon as that achievement come up, I'm like. Escape, quit, yes. Yeah. So I, like, done. I don't <laughs> ever, I don't want to play. I don't, actually, I don't think I want to play episode two again. You don't hey, see, remember when Alex Vance's dad ate shit? You don't want to see, that, see that crazy <laughs> ending that you'll probably never see the conclusion to? But in addition to that, thank you for reminding me that. I'm actually pretty proud of that. That's one of my recent uh, achievements or whatever. Well, let's but, talk about... Well, what was the other thing I, I teased you about on Twitter the other day? I don't know. Because I kind of coaxed you into doing the little Rocket Man You did, you did. Damn it, Davis, I want to talk about Final Fantasy VI. Oh, yeah, that game. That's a, that's with, a fine definition right there. Spoiled. So, so last, week, so last week, I picked up my very first Super Nintendo. Wow. And what? I, yeah, I've, I've, I've never I've never you, owned one. I never played one I before. Only, I, I, only sound ha- I never even handled the controller. Before. I only sound you were surprised debating, you're, of all people. You were debating between getting a, a SNES and a 64. That's right. I put the poll up, and the poll was pretty over. Uh, all resounding you really had SNES. to do was go hold a controller for both of them, and that your decision sure, would have been made. It was SNES versus 64? That's the poll I oh, put up. Oh, fuck, dude. Yeah, and SNES it was like, is like an all-time great. 64 had like well, a handful of awesome games. You know the thing is, though? I only want to get a 64. Uh, that are I don't want to like diverge now. onto 64, but... The only reason I want to get a 64, honestly, is probably because of Doom 64. <laughs> but, but you can... I've got, it, I'm, I've got, a, I've got Doom 64 on, on the computer. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a bunch of really interesting titles on the 64. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Multiplayer like stuff. Like precursor mostly. things that you... Really interesting really titles cool. that you can't play because the controller is garbage. The controller is garbage. Chris Davis, sure. every, but, everything... Every console has a handful of interesting titles. The N64 was a bad console. Okay. It was a bad. We're not going to bad... get into this right now. It was, it was a bad. I don't want to go with, with bad a bad con- controller in a limited library. I just want to throw out my support for trying out Body Harvest. Try that game out. That thing it's... is so fucking jank, dude. It's it is so jank. Jank. I love jank. janky shit. Though. What <laughs> game on sixty four is not jank? By the way, we're running footage of Final Fantasy six. Yeah, this is the VI, PlayStation. So we should yeah. talk about this Final is the Fantasy PlayStation VI. one version of Final Fantasy six, and you can tell because look at this loading loading time right here. A yeah. regular battle. Loading. What the shit? Loading. Boom. What the shit? Now imagine that loading. Imagine that version. loading time going in and out of the main menu, or like, of like your, you know, your stats. Oh god. It's, it's, it's horrible. It's unplay. It's borderline unplayable. So anyway, I picked up an. Uh, I finished this game on PS One. It's not unplayable. I picked up my Super Nintendo. Pretty much chief among them. The only thing I wanted to get it for was Final Fantasy VI, because I wanted to play it for so long. We never got it in Europe. The first Final Fantasy we ever got really was Final Fantasy VII. So when seven came out, we're like, "What the fuck is? What happened to the last six of them?" You know. Anyway, so hey, we, we were we didn't get cro- we didn't get Chrono Trigger. We didn't get uh, you, know, you, all, you all thought it was like Star Wars. That, <laughs> where's episodes <laughs> where's one through the three? Now we didn't get Chrono Trigger. We didn't get Super Mario RPG. We didn't get a bunch of uh, Super Nintendo stuff because Nintendo yeah. really wasn't that big over there. I mean, not comparatively speaking to Sega, at least. It was actually the Genesis. The Genesis Drive. That was ex- successful. It there. was. It was. The Mega Drive. It was extremely popular over there. So was the Master System, too. Really, really you, popular. You had a, the you Master had a Genesis, system. though. Did you get a 32X or a, or a Sega CD? I haven't. The only reason I'll get a Sega CD is because of Snatcher. Also that's the only Lunar, thing I One and two. But anyway, Final Fantasy VI. Tell me about the magic of Final Fantasy VI. Sell me on this game. Okay. Scotty Pippin, Slam City. I am loving Final Fantasy VI <laughs> way more than I thought I ever would. And I don't, and like Brad knows, I don't play a lot of JRPGs. Yeah. I mean, but yet that being said, probably one of my favorite games of all time, as cliche as it is, is Final Fantasy VII. It's yeah, it's probably my game. entry level baby's first JRPG, whatever, it's still a good game. But anyway, so this playing this game, though, has given me a, a whole new appreciation for Seven itself. Just the, just the jump. Like, playing a complete sprite based JRPG, this is the first one I've ever played like that. So. It took a lot of getting used to, to just seeing like non-animated sprites and stuff like that. Visually, I mean, I can get, I can get, I can get past it, but it takes some getting used to still. But the story, I'm loving it so far. So far, at the time of recording this today, I have just beaten my first encounter with Kefka on the, the 
I guess the mountains of Nash. Yeah. Yeah. When when he's trying to send his army up to you know destroy. You're doing it. like a mini game. That yeah. sounds interesting. And that that mini game, I I kind of reminded me of the Fort Condor bullshit yeah. in FF7. Except Fort on Fort here Condor. it was done much better on <laughs> yeah. this one. But uh, no, story wise, I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, music, obviously. I mean, it's, what, what can I say about it? I mean, everyone's already talked about Final Fantasy. I'll be VI honest. I have tried playing Final Fantasy VI. How I have much? tried playing Chrono Trigger, and not it's not. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's not that I'm saying I don't. I don't think these games are good. I, I like Jack said. Like I may just be having a harder time personally getting past the the gap. Like so the mental the mental gap for me, which has been the. You know, I started like like Jack. I started with Final Fantasy VII. It is hard to go back sometimes, and I don't know. Maybe I just didn't. I need, maybe I just need to give it more time it's one of those to get things further. You just some people just find it easier to get past than others. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's not respect. It's, it's not that you don't I, respect I that game. That or whatever. You know, you know how good that game is. There's I mean, no denying it. But. You just gotta push through. I, the, the thing is, Nick. But the combat, well, like, the, like, the, like I didn't like the combat when I like. Like the, the combat in the, this is not all that different than Final Fantasy VII. There's a lot more of it. it. Also, I'll say that there's a lot more of it. The battle encounters on this are so freaking frequent. The thing is, also, like, it's insane. I'm not even saying like I love Final Fantasy VII as much as the next guy, but like, have, going back to a game like that after playing so many other like more modern RPGs and whatnot, and then playing a game like that, the combat system or the battle system is kind of boring. I mean, the, the only reason I could probably and I'm pro- I, pr- I like Final Fantasy VII and later as far as their combat systems goes is because they do have that animation that does look pretty. It does l- more. Sure. It is more well, visually interesting. So to take that element out and then suddenly just be playing a like blander version of a combat system that I already consider to be kind of bland. Well, let me let me ask this. That's that's the hard. That's that's what I'm having a hard time. What were you past. playing it on? Uh, six. You're yes. Um, it would probably been PS One, right? You know, I want to say, I, did, was that part of the? It was like an anthology. Yeah, I or, had the anthology. Yeah, um, no, that, that was Chronicles. It was like part was of a Chronicles. Disc. I thought, yeah, I thought the Final Fantasy anthology was Chronicles. Four and Chrono Trigger. They, no, well, that, there was there was an anthology one that had like one or two. You're right. And then there was a Chronicles that had like f- four and Chrono Trigger. Right. Yeah. There was, so I had both of those. I think the one I played was the PS4. The, the thing is, you have to kind of play more because early on on the surface these battle systems they seem pretty shallow yeah but but attack, like attack, as you attack. progress in the game like 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 this one specifically you have the esper system which are kind of like your summons you learn skills from the different espers but then when you really start to pay attention you you also see that it affects like the stack growth and, and you can see that if you have a certain type of esper on a certain character that that they start to become right. like, like a very good at like one thing and then you know once you get into the late game when, when you're like relics your accessories start to get more specialized and doing weird and crazier things that that's when you know kind of kind of breaking these games these early final fantasy games or even the later the later ones too is where the real fun of of i think the gameplay See, of final I'm, fantasy I'm glad you're and, and like that, six was really fun to break too um just like seven was like think about seven and you know you're fucking with like like Knights of the Round and Mime Materia, W and, Summon and, like, and shit like that, and you have like fucking oh, quad about mime cut materia. on uh, double attack or whatever, and you're attacking like eight I mean, times. You can break and, the game very and, like, easily. It's really yeah. fun to break. Eight was fun to break. Nine, see, the thing you is, really though, break as far as, much, as where I'm. I- where ten, I'm at you can on break six, the shit though. out of ten. They even had like skills that let you break the damage cap and like yeah. go into into five digits. Go That's ahead. crazy. I, I, I haven't gotten even, I haven't even gotten Esper yet. Where I'm at. Like I haven't equipped that. Yeah, you're, at all you're yet. still. I'm still, early. I'm still really early on. Honestly, to be to be totally honest, when it comes to Final Fantasy, my history is with the series, I have always it's always that turning point where you get your first summon. That is always like where it's sure. kind of clicked. For and me. I'm not at that because I always love like every time I every time there's a new Final Fantasy and 15 is no different. I'm always like I can't wait to see what the summons are because I always love the summon system. Yeah. I played Final Fantasy 11 for like two months because I wanted to be a fucking summoner. And then I, then I was like, well, that's gonna take too fucking long, so I stopped. But I know, I know what let, you're saying. It's, it's, like, like, let, the, let it's like the crux of the whole thing. Let me give you a, 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 a cool example, real quick. There's like a status effect in this game that some enemies they'll turn you into an imp, which is a little green dude who's fucking useless. But there's like special gear you can track down in this game called like imp gear, and if you get like a full set of it, all of a sudden that imp character actually becomes. Like you, I mean, I, I have. It's been a long time since I played it, but I think that's how it works. And you can have like a character in like this imp form that's actually really strong because you've tracked down all the imp gear. You know, like that. 
thing. That kind of like weird s- secret, we uh, uh, goofy stuff is, I think, what added a lot of you know this fun is, to like you know the mechanics and exploring, and, you know, and all, just a lot of. There seems to be quite a bit of depth to it so far, and. There's a lot of things on it that I've noticed that I haven't noticed on any other Final Fantasy, at least none that I can remember. So, one of the biggest things I've noticed, this is kind of very comedic driven. Like, oh, yeah. there's a lot of comedy in this game. It's actually pretty funny. Like, it took yeah. me by surprise. I didn't expect it to be as funny as it is. I always looked Meeting... at this game and thought it was kind of dark, but I guess... Mm-hmm. Well, that's... I mean, even Final Fantasy VII, people look back and they forget. Oh, like hilarious. Because modern Square Enix is like very self-serious you know and 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 like back then like this shit was kind of goofy and like really fun and charming ways and i feel like that's kind of like gone away yeah and before the show we were talking about the i can't remember his name the octopus ultros ultros yeah you're fighting him and he's like telling you telling you kids to watch out of the octopus ink and it's tasty and he's just just really goofy off the wall shit it's like this he's like this weird little like sub boss who pops up multiple times throughout the game he's like a i'm like fighting him on a twirling villain and he also happens to be like an octopus (laughs) and he just shows up to ruin your fucking day it's pretty hilarious i mean kefka himself is just like a joker basically i mean he's he's really insane. yeah he's 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 the joker he's and also another thing i noticed is so much story actually happens in this like battle looking scene setup like take uh pretty much ff7 onwards or the more common ones all the story is done through dialogue on like uh on a pre-rendered background or whatever quite a lot of the story and introduction of a lot of the characters that i've come across have been in the battle system it, it, it's really hard to explain but like um i was i was rolling along and i'm in the desert and i'm i fight a you know an enemy and then the enemy dies and all of a sudden this like this rough looking dude just comes up and he says without transitioning back to the overworld. yeah exactly he says like i'm hungry i'm like okay so i try giving him like a tonic it doesn't do shit he just says i'm hungry so i just you know naturally i just cast some fucking magic on him and kill him but it doesn't work so i find out i go to the town right next to it and i find like some dried meat in the store i buy the dried meat i go back outside sure enough this this guy comes back i throw him the dried meat boom i've got a new character it's, it's like, and it's introduced in the battle system. It's, it, yeah. And it's hilarious. Gal, it, it's pretty funny introduction. He's like this, almost like a Neanderthal kind of character. Yeah. But yeah. And he, or like, he's like a wild child kind of. Yeah. But it, there's been some dark moments. Like, like you were saying, like you thought it was a dark series game. There's, com- there's some really weird shit in it. Though. Like, 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 uh, like when the Phantom Science, he's just... Well, I don't want to say. Yeah, I don't know if you want to say where I, already where I've been or not. But I'm just saying, like when I you've I been on the say, Phantom Train. That's right? what I was going to say. Going through the Phantom Forest to the Phantom Train, and like it's it's all done kind of seamlessly. And all of a sudden, you're like fighting ghosts and shit, and it seems really weird. And obviously, there's that whole meme where you suplex the train, mm. which yeah. and it's done in this really crude animation. It's really because there's a character that has like everyone has like different. Like a special Saban. move set, Saban. Mm-hmm. and Saban, all his moves are like, you, you actually perform them like Street Fighter moves, you know, <laughs> to do his specials. And one of them is a suplex, and he, where he lifts the dude off the screen and like slams him back down. But it's all done fuck like, it, it works on the train. It too. Works, so you got this train that's coming like upside down. So he it's body just, slams the train. Fuck it, <laughs> it's really it's really out there. But then like at the same time, you do that battle, and it's just really kind of goofy. And then you realize like it's the train for like. The Departed as it's taken them on like the, to the other side. It's like some really weird shit. You've seen, so, correct me if I'm wrong, but like the story part with Cyan, right? And his Cyan is like the old gruff dude, right? Yeah. Uh, with his family. Yeah. And they're on the train. Yeah. 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 That was like that's kind of a sad thing. Like, no, like, like that that that. Well, well, it's an old ass fucking game. It's a small story point, but like Kefka like poisons the yeah, water in this in this town, right? And, and and Cyan he goes and he, and he realizes that like it was you know the town his family is from but but he, he doesn't find out later till he's on the Phantom train and he sees his family that his family's dead like his family start boarding the train as yeah. he's leaving and by that point you realize that those who oh. board the train are like going they're dead they're going yeah. to the other side yeah and so when he leaves the castle originally they're like sick. And he's like, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll try and find some cure or whatever. And then so you go through the forest, you go onto the train, you do what you do on the train, you come out, and then you see your family, like, board that train. Yeah. And he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, like they're already dead. There's a lot of really cool like stuff. Like, like, you've never played Final Fantasy VI before, so we can't really talk about it. But there's a point in the game where, like, something happens and it, like, completely shifts what, like, 
everything in the game. And it's the kind of thing that you actually don't see in a lot of other RPGs. It's like, it's significant. I'll say this, the only spoiler, I guess, that I knew ahead of time, or was kind of spoiled to me, was that uh, Terra is an Esper. That's the oh, only okay. thing I know about it. Okay. But, I mean, somehow I've avoided spoilers this whole time. I don't want to <laughs> know anything else about it, really. But. I love I love fucking Shadow, how he just comes out of nowhere. He's like this mysterious character, and he shows up, and he's a fucking badass, and you're like, oh, this guy's so awesome, I can't believe I, I have him now. And then he leaves. Yes. You're like, fuck! I saw, I saw him at a bar, I spoke to him, he joins my party, and he he, has a he's really dog. awesome. And I'm using him, and then I kill this one dude, and then he just, like, fucks off. He's like, see ya. I'm like, yeah. where'd he go? And then, like, my party is, like, one person less. I'm, all, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you this now. Don't forget it. All right. Oh, no. I have a question. I love just that remember. Character. Just remember. Is there a way for, is, this, is there a version of this? Like, let's play a okay. on, like, Vita? That's complicated. Like, uh, it's, it's, on, it's on the virtual console. I believe you it's... You can play this on your Wii U. But what if I wanted to play it on the go? Because I feel like that's the only way I'm You have play. a Vita? Yeah. You have not turned it on in a while? Correct. Mm. Hello, so, the so like, the Vita has been hacked. So you could play it on a SNES emulator on your Vita? Absolutely. I thought there was a version It's actually that really was... easy to... I feel like this is available in the PlayStation Store or something. The PS1 But that's the version. PS1 version. You don't want to play it. Uh, uh, but uh, well, wasn't a there a version available on the Virtual Console for 3DS and, and DS? There was a GBA uh, one. There was a GBA the, release. You have to have a new 3DS. Well, how is the version on the Wii U? Do you have a new 3DS? Yes. Uh, but I don't think Final Fantasy VI is on that con console. You have the Wii U? Play it, play it on the Wii U. It's on the Virtual Console. It is on the Wii U Virtual Console? I didn't think it was. The Wii Virtual Console, oh. I think. I mean, well, failing that, if you, you know, just play it on a PSP or something. If anybody wants to make some suggestions as the best version to play, play you can, it with you can a, tweet at me. Do you have an old PSP? You can tweet at me. No, I don't. You can tweet uh, at me you at Nick8030. Let is me know. Is it on phones, actually? Actually, you know what? Uh, that's not a it must, great version. Uh, oh, wait, well, you can get the SNES, uh, SNES emulator. Well, one well, thing, they've been like, doing Android releases If you of buy, it. like, the, the one that's on Android, you could uh, get, like, the, the NVIDIA Shield. And stuff like that, too. And you could have the controller and you'd be playing on your phone. On a slightly related note, what's the best version of Chrono Trigger to play? Uh, DS one I've heard. No, well, see that's what I. Yeah, had. all these. Yeah, you know what? I, in that case, definitely just play the DS version. But all these I actually have secret special answers that secret need special to answers. I don't yeah. know. To me, I mean, I guess I'm not gonna be purist. Like to me, the best way to play is CRT console game. CRT. Fuck well, yeah. CRT is not even coming into the equation for me. I'm well, sorry. <laughs> like the Final Fantasy VI uh, Advance on GBA is actually a good version of the game, with the exception that the music is kind of fucked. Um, but if you don't know any better, you don't know any better, right? So I mean, but you should know better because the soundtrack in this game is it's pretty phenomenal. Incredible, yeah. yeah. But no, I, I'm loving it so far, and I, I fully intend to ke keep on playing. I didn't think it would grab me as much as it did, but... Just grabbed you by the balls? Oh, it, it grabbed me by the dick, and it's been fantastic. The shit, be, it, when they're, when when they're walking in their Magitek armor, like, towards Narsh, and it's all, like, kind of, like, pseudo 3D. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with, with the, the intro. With the yeah. intro it's like the that music, shit blew my fucking mind back the music's in the music kind of so reminded beautiful. me of, like, Kill Bill, like, that kind of... Japanese is, kind of thing. It was really awesome. I liked it. A stupid lot. question, but is there a Jesse in the game? Jesse? Jesse? Like Biggs and Jesse? Biggs, Wedge. Oh, no, no, no there's, Wedge, there's Wedge, Wedge and Vix. Vix okay. is like, well, at least Biggs. it was on the SNES. So I'm just thinking back to Final Fantasy VII. The first three sure. NPCs you meet are yeah. Biggs, yeah, Wedge, well, and Jesse. There, there it, opens, it opens with, those two this right is there. pretty much the intro right here. Yeah. Terra Wedge is the one Biggs. in the front there. And it's Wedge and Vix as it is on the SNES one, but they probably fixed it for the PS1. Yeah, it says Keep it for consistency. Yeah, but no, I'm really enjoying it, I, and I didn't think I'd enjoy it as much. And speaking of the SNES, I've been putting out some suggestions or asking for suggestions of other stuff to play. And since getting it, I have got a, um, I've got Super Mario World now. I've yet to play it. Very good. I've got Turtles in Time on its way, which I'm super excited to play. Yeah, I love played, you've never played Turtles in Time. I've never played Turtles in Time. Oh man, Dude. I, I love Streets joy. of Rage. I love Streets of Rage too. That and game so is this just kind of like the Turtles SNES one. Turtle in Time is just a joy. Yeah, yes. it's just a joy. I've got um, the X Men uh, a Mutant Apocalypse on its way, which is kind of like the <laughs> it's kind of like the Streets of Rage of X Men. It's supposed to be really good. Oh. And so I'm excited to play that. And also I've got one of the granddaddies coming, Super Metroid. Which I've never played a Metroid game. Well, I've recently played Super Metroid. I can tell you, it's good. I I, 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 it's I highly recommend good. not playing it in one sitting, though. Um, yeah. You had a bad hey, how, how do you feel about these rumors that uh, the Nintendo NX might be going back to uh, cartridge-based games? 
I'm just. It's not gonna be cartridges as we know cartridges. It's gonna be like an SD card. It'll be some kind of weird hybrid. But that's fine. I've been sitting there for a long time. Like like the 3DS. It's like card has a cartridge, like yeah. your Vita. It's gonna be an has SD card, but still, it's SD. weird to think about a console. But it's not though. I mean, load times gone. But it's not a console. It's a hybrid that hooks up to your TV. I know. Don't tell me that's not weird though. It, it is. It oh, is the whole concept. The whole concept weird. is weird. Without getting into it makes the whole, sense, without getting sure. into the whole console thing going on recently, everything that's been going on recently, I am more hyped now for the NX than I've ever been. And oh, I'm. Yeah. This would be. This is potentially a fantastic opportunity for Nintendo to do. Pretty much a plain Jane console would be fantastic well, at this point. they're not doing that. No, they're not going to do that, but I mean, something more traditional. Like, okay, this is the system. You're going to have it until we release the next system. That is it. It's going to play games. That's all you want, right? With And here's a shit ton of support for it. I'm going to say this. What Sony and Microsoft are doing has turned me off so much. It's actually made me more excited. For that is NX. exactly what's happened to me. I, I want something new and different and fresh, not I, I, slightly more powerful. Well, hardware. we should be finding out about that sometime very soon because yeah, the launch the is in six months. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. Uh, but, we have a couple more games to talk about. I know I know. Chris Davis wants to talk about Dead by Daylight. We're coming up on an hour. Do we want to take a break and then come back to it on the other side? or? Yeah, because I've got two games, actually. Okay, so, so Dead by Daylight and, and then what's your other game? Cluster Truck. Cluster Truck. What? <laughs> All right. So uh, we'll we'll talk about those on the other side. We'll also do uh, uh, news. Is there any news? There's a few things. There's a, there's a few we things. We could talk about, yeah. We have a few things we could discuss. Nothing significant? Nothing crazy. But we have, we'll, we'll be back in a few minutes with m- more shit to talk about. Don't go anywhere. All right, we're back. Hey, Chris Davis. Hello. Tell us about this game you've been dying to tell us about. Well, I've been playing two games, actually. Well, you're going to start with the one I just but I think the to. most important one to mention. If you say Cluster Truck. Uh, no. Okay. But that's next. No, I'm talking about Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight. The one with... The, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. If you cross your eyes, that looks like Brad. Like, straight up. Up there in the... <laughs> It uh, kind of does. He's like kinda Brad does. hanging off for dear life with his eyes rolled back in his head. I'm, so, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Dead by Daylight. So you you guys know that I love a good asymmetrical multiplayer experience. Yes, I think we all do. Splinter Cell. You know, evolve, evolve, evolve to a point. Yeah, I kind of like it. Uh, but this love. game, man, this game is pretty. Okay, so so this is from uh, Behavior Interactive. Okay. They uh, are known for mostly. Uh, ports and uh, smaller projects. Their their last relatively well known project was Naughty Bear. Okay, oh, no, that, Bear. that Holy classic. Crap. Yeah, that, that classic that and its sequel too. That is oh a, yeah, that is a paradise. There was a sequel to that. What? Yeah, yeah it was. This is those games are garbage. This this game came out back in June, actually during E three. Uh, it is a one v four asymmetrical multiplayer experience. In which one person plays as this supernatural serial killer, Jason. and four survivors try to escape from this map. So why are they called survivors? Because I don't think their fate has been determined when the game starts. Well, I feel like they should just be victims. Well, they're, they're no. just they're just called survivors. the The fiction of this game goes that there is this ancient supernatural creature just known as the Entity. And it they went for the vague answer. It's, it's okay. been awakened by the the actions of these serial killers on these maps, and serial killers. Huh? The entity to survive has to live off the sacrifices of these survivors. Okay. So these survivors they they become trapped in this hellish dimension, in which they are forever being stalked and killed by these serial killers and the entity feeds so off wait, wait, both. are there multiple serial killers or is there just one there's four actually right now there originally were three there's oh, but, a oh but you only play as one at a time yeah okay gotcha so there, I, one of them is uh they, they all kind of look like traditional like the the, the classic horror monsters slashers. yeah slashers so you've got one looks a lot like jason you've got the trapper who's got a, a sledge it's kind of like jason uh he's got a, a he's slide. got 
a uh, sledgehammer? He's got like a machete, and he can lay down bear traps on the ground. Each one has a specific <laughs> power. Okay. That's this is the wraith. His ability is to turn invisible, and that seems unfair. <laughs> well, he's not completely invisible. You can see an outline of him. He's, he's like the predator. He's like the yeah. predator. He's, he's in the way. There's also the the hillbilly, which is kind of like one of the hills of eyes guys, except he's got a chainsaw. And then the new one is actually a, called the nurse, and she looks exactly like a Silent Hill nurse, but she can teleport. They should have a ring ghost. So the way the game works yeah, is fuck that. that <laughs> creeps the, crawls along the grass and shit. You can't see her. The, Slithers along the ground. Ha, actually. The killer hunts down the survivors, and then he impales them on the hooks. Which apparently doesn't affect them too much. Well, it... They are so. I am injured right now. I'm being healed by uh, one of our community members, and uh, you can heal yourself. But when you're in this damaged state, we should probably mention this was we did a community night last weekend, right? Uh, or, we did it uh, last Friday, and then I did it again on I think Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the the way it works is that uh, two hits and you're down, and the serial killer can pick you up. Mm-hmm. Uh. Once you're impaled on the hook, if you're not rescued, you are eventually sacrificed to the entity, the demon god, basically, who's this gigantic like. Wait, are you always? Do they always thing. hang you on the hook? They always hang you on the hook. That's the only way to really kill you in the game. I was the, expecting the these, like can, really elaborate like serial killer like murder animations. But the way you're saying this, well, that was just, being put on the hook just translates to you're out, also of, the, that you're out of that round, right? Is this, is this this theoretically, round no. That's what I'm yeah, it, no, it, it's not round based. It's, it's okay. just one match. So the uh, what happens is your other survivor friends can actually come and get you off the hook and rescue you. Right, right. Uh, now, the survivor's objective is to find these five generators on the map. There's, there's like seven or eight, but you have to charge up five in order to power the escape doors. And then you go to the escape door, activate it, and then you run out, hopefully, if you can survive. Yeah. Um, chances are you're going to lose at least one person. Definitely. I was certainly makes noise so. when you're trying to do it. Because, I mean, I've seen some yeah, Twitch gameplay of this. Let's what, what do they do? So when survivors are working on a generator, there'll be skill checks that pop up that are kind of like the, the, the active reloads in, in Gears. Yeah. Uh, if you fuck it up, it causes a, a backfire that sets back your progress on restoring it. And it uh, does this noise that alerts the killer to the location of this loud sound. So you got to use that as a trap, a lure. No, the survivors have can almost it? no way to defend themselves in this game. I know. There, you, there you, are some items you can get, like a flashlight will, that will blind them. But really, it's about escape and evasion. But you got to do that horror movie thing where it's like, it's okay, guys, you go. I'll take care of this. And <laughs> you then got you, a role play and with then, Yeah. Well, you, and you lure the... The bad guy over while the rest of y'all escape. I mean, you can do that. I, th I, I would so assume that's like an advanced strategy. you have four survivors and you have five, five generators, right? So I would imagine the strategy is almost always starting with everybody split up and go find a different generator, right? That is true in a way. Um, you do tend to spawn together when you start a map. But th the thing is, it takes a long time, like almost two, three minutes straight to repair a generator when you're by yourself. It goes significantly faster when you have a second or even a third person helping you out. So everyone's kind of mashing on the same generator and, or pushing like a... Yeah, you're, you're basically holding down... And the more people that do it, the faster it goes. I would yeah, assume. absolutely. And you can actually, if you hit the, the skill check just right, there's a marker that'll actually increase your progress. Gotcha. So Okay, so for, forgive me for like, sound like I'm shitting on this game or whatever, because I'm really not. I've seen some footage of this on Twitch, and it looks pretty fun, but... Is every map just powering up generators? Because all it all I've seen of it so far seems like it's just like one multiplayer mode of a game that doesn't have a lot of whole depth to it. That's pretty much it at this point. Okay. Now there I will is, say this: so what kind of price points? It, well, is Brad always? mentioned this too. Like they're they're working on uh, Friday the Thirteenth, which is the same concept. Which it, I would it imagine, basically is. Which I think I, I mean I can't speak. I haven't played the Friday the Thirteenth game yet, so the I don't main, know. The main difference between these two games, as far as I've been able to see, is that this game has you doing multiple things uh, to but, actually kill a survivor. Is this with Friday right the Thirteenth? Yeah, this is this is killer footage. Uh, in Friday the Thirteenth, Jason can instantly kill anyone yeah so, so if you get caught out in the open you're fucked yeah. so but i feel like that's almost a, that's i feel like that's almost the exciting route to take 
I mean, I guess there could be an argument made for either way. I think we're gonna have to wait and see how it pans out. But yeah. I feel like if, if you want it to be like a real, like kind of horror movie, like slasher movie simulation, it really has to be like if you get caught out in the open and you, you or you don't get far enough away from him, like he can just straight up fucking murder you yeah. without giving your friends so, an opportunity to save you. But I can see the appeal of both ways. There's this definitely seems like. Uh, an interesting concept. So, so this is cool. So, I don't think it, I don't know if it has like a lot of steam power because I mean it seems like you're just doing the, the how many, same. How many thing, maps you know? are there? I believe there are five. Okay. Do, um, do they feel thus far? Uh, they they do definitely. There's a. Uh, I mean, this one is uh, out in the middle of the woods. There's one that's out in a, a cornfield. Ooh. Uh, there's uh, one that's in the kind of uh, the outskirts of a. What a the asylum. fuck is that? Yeah, that's it's the, the spider, that's the entity. Yeah. That's that's the kill animation for killing a survivor. The, this this player is map rapidly matching down A or, or the space bar right now. While just being fucking just, murdered. Just trying to survive as long as he can. But oh, you, you you only have that much time to work with. And in that time, a community and then, can come up and theoretically try yeah. to revive you. But the whole time, yeah. obviously, the killer's watching to make that's sure. Oh, it absolutely is. It's great. That's fucking creepy looking. I hate spiders. But the, sorry. But the, <laughs> the, the, the cool thing is that this game, the survivors play from a third-person perspective. The killer always plays from a first-person perspective. Yeah. And in that difference, it's which it's kind of like Splinter Cell with their multiplayer, it, it can really make for some intense hide-and-go-seek gameplay. Like, uh... What if I told you... So can I you don't do that like... kind of thing where you're following behind, like, the view of the enemy? When you're spectating? No. Or... I mean, because they're in first person, they have a limited view. Yeah. You can be behind them and they can't see you. Yes, that's correct. There, Which is I've... cool. Like, like, remember when, uh... Well, yeah. I uh, like, some... remember when... Nolan was the toaster in, in that one. How game. could we all, how could we forget and, and when Nolan was the was fucking toaster? He was behind the view of what? I, Go ahead, Chris. I guess I don't remember that. But uh in, that was improper. But no, no, you can improper. absolutely do that. When 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 the when the killer is close to a survivor and you're playing as a survivor, the music amps up and it becomes, you know, more like serial killer, they're about to attack you music. So and it kind of gives it a I mean, I mean, it it gives you a way that gives away to the server that yes, the killer is coming into range. You might want to hide yeah. or something like that, or even run away. Uh, but uh, the the interesting thing is that the serv the the killer, the closer you are, the more visible their their uh, field of view is. You, you kind of see like the the red field of vision that they have, so you know pretty much if you're going to be caught or not. Okay. If you're if you're hiding, right I have off. a question for you. Because I think a lot of people in chat see, apparently want to see me play this game. What if I told you I hate being chased? Like, I hate it. Then you're never, ever going to want to play as a survivor in this game. Wonderful. I'll just be the killer. If you're time. a survivor and you have sex with another survivor, do you, like, automatically get killed? That is not a feature. See, yeah. that's Sorry. a missed opportunity right there. They should have you follow. They should have you. They should give you. There should be, like, a. You know what I mean? Like, a. Uh, they give you the, like you have to play to the rules of horror movies, and if mm -hmm. you break the rule, like if you if you break the rules, there's some kind of benefit, but it also like they make your... they make one person stay behind, all that kind of thing. Right? Well, there's there's a couple things to that, but uh, let me let me mention one thing. So in the game, the goal of the survivors is to get those five generators. Yes. Now, there's a catch with that. If three people are killed and there's only one survivor left, a trap door opens up somewhere on the map. You don't know where it is until you find it. And if you powered up two generators, then that trapdoor opens and that can be an instant escape escape and victory for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's kind of cool. So it really does encourage you to explore the map and just find out everything that's there. Um, as far as powering up characters and just having a balance, uh, there is in the game, there there is a skill tree and there are consumables that you can use to get strategic advances when you play. Uh, the game is kind of built more around uh, uh, these consumables. Wait, so you're like progressing a character that you, ca yeah, that you bring Yeah, each character is actually a class in a way. Or does like the skill tree start over at the beginning of every match? You know what I'm saying? Like, do you, like does each match you have a skill well, tree? Well, if, if you you're can... in a private match, you can turn on... Uh, so, let, let me backtrack. There's characters that have level progression and skills that you can use to, uh, you know, that you can unlock. 
uh, when you're matchmaking in the ranked gameplay, then you can get those points to go towards upgrading your character. Um, that you could, that, but then so you could potentially make your character stronger or yeah. more uh, helpful. Th- I guess is the word helpful to your team. I don't know. So, so yeah, char- each character has uh, their own like unique skill tree to start with. But there's an item in the game. There's a thing in the game called the blood web, in which it's it's kind of randomly generated, but it kind of turns it the skill trees into a sphere grid system, to where you can eventually upgrade all your characters to be exactly like one another and theor- theoretically top them all out, and have them all have the exact same skills. Gotcha. But okay. that's going to require a shit ton of uh, gameplay. I would imagine so. All right. Well. This looks and cool. Is it early access? No, it's not early this access. Straight up, this is a straight up video yeah. game. It's, a, it's, it's, on the it's market. a $20 release. It's not flattering reviews. Do you know why? Uh, mainly, a problem early on for the first month or so was balance. Because it came down to the fact that survivors uh, could actually win quite easily. Mm. Uh, they they kind of fixed that from my experience. Um I think, I think also, there, there's there been some significant issues with connections and networking between mm. players. Gotcha. Well, I mean, it seems to me that the important thing is that the community seems to be enjoying it. So oh, the game is the game is really fun when you get down to it. Got to get a good group of people playing. Oh, um, so oh right down here uh, in this area, there's always a basement on the map. And there's four hooks, and there's three closets a survivor can hide in. And you can actually get points for just being down there as a survivor. Huh. Interesting. It's there's just there's yeah, a you lot can, like, of little camp things. Out like while the rest of them are doing the hard work, basically. I mean, theoretically, you could. <laughs> um, yeah, I, what exactly well, okay. It? So I, people want me to play this. I will. I will. I will. It's it's a blast. I will play it. Maybe I'll try and find some time this weekend to play it. You with should, the community. There, there was a there was a highlight we did with a. Uh, Mr. Green Toes. Yeah, he was the killer, and we we've been playing all night, and I noticed that Mr. Green Toes was in the Discord chat, the voice channel. Yeah. I thought, you know, maybe he has this game. Maybe he wants to play. Turns out he'd already played like six hours of the game to prepare, but he wasn't saying anything the entire time, and he had this a uh, voice modulator on to where he had this super deep like killer oh, voice. Oh <laughs> fuck, he fucking went he scream he went all scream on uh, on that shit. Uh yeah, he uh that's, so we had him cool. play through <laughs> as the killer and it's just this f- hilarious highlight of him stalking uh the group and I. Well, that I, is that I'm going to play it. It's, it's Tell cool. me no more, I will play it maybe this weekend. I also this does kind of make me I'm I'm really curious now to see how that Friday the 13th game turns out. Because. I feel like that's still a ways out, though. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of announced. I really like the idea of it. Was that a PAX? I feel like that may have been a PAX, and we they, just missed it. I don't they know. They announced it last year, and it's they haven't really shown any gameplay from it, as far as I can no, find. No, there's gameplay. They, I mean, there's, there's all, all I've seen are animations for Jason killing people. That's all I've well, seen. That's, that's, that's all what, I've been able to find. That's really. what people want. That's it. That's what. Well. That's the, that's what I, I just want to see all the gruesome deaths. But if, if it's a one v four experience, you know, I want to see what it's like from the survivor's perspective. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So, so we have, you have one more game you wanted to mention. Yeah, I can I can mention it for a few minutes. This is a game that actually comes out next week. Okay. Uh, I got a review code in the mail, and it's a game I've actually been looking forward to for a while. Like in the mail? Well, I was going to say, right. like well, in the my mail. email. Okay. Yeah. In, you open up your mailbox one day. So oh, look at this. No. Is it, it is envelope? called Clusterfuck. Uh, tr- Cluster truck. truck. Cluster Truck. And Clusterfuck is a very good adjective well, for that's, this game. Well, I'm sure that's what they were going for. This is a game you might have seen. It is an indie project. It's from Landfall Games. They're a Swedish developer. Uh, they've Swedish. only done like a s- small projects like, I don't know if you've heard of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I see what you did there. But uh, let me just let me just start run the, the footage. What so is it this? is a first person <laughs> platformer. Oh, this actually looks fucking crazy. In, <laughs> oh yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. In, in which thing. you're jumping off on the backs of trucks. The the floor is essentially the ground is essentially lava, and you're just trying to meet an end goal. Holy shit! Uh, this is so and that's okay. That's it's, like, the the physics are very floaty and very jumpy. 
and they're indefinitely fun. Um, but the thing about it is that it's got a great soundtrack. This feels like, and, like the fucking Matrix Reloaded almost. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no, it's 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 wonderful this platforming that you're doing throughout this match. This actually looks pretty hilarious. Oh it is. I'm, it I'm, absolutely I'm down is. for stuff like this. But the, the cool thing is that it's kind of uh I wouldn't say procedurally generated, but I would say that the What the f the actions of the trucks are random every time. So they they will run into space. each other, they will explode. There's there's no <laughs> guarantee that every attempt you make, you'll actually make it to the end goal, because sometimes the trucks just will explode well, and won't make it Yeah, to the well, end. it seems to me like because of the random nature of the way the trucks move, like, there will be certain rounds where it's actually kind of, it just turns out to be kind of impossible. It is. It literally yeah, you're is. bad. Well, no, that's, it's literally impossible sometimes. Are you like Superman? How are you jumping like yeah, this? It, that's just the way the jumping or works in the game. Or is it just momentum? It's actually, it's, it's the momentum, and it's the, just the exact moment you're getting the right bounce. Um, but yeah, it's just you going through I these like series the feel, of maps. I do like the physicality of it. It looks yeah, like it, it feels really good. Cool. Holy shit. The phys phys physicality. <laughs> see, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> see, look at that. So yeah, this you're not paying attention, but you see in the background. That looks like the game just decided it was like, you know what? Fuck towards you. One another. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you want to win? Fuck you. Exactly. Yeah, you got to earn it. But it's it's got that kind of like N plus or like really fast, you know, just you're How instantly going to restart this. It's it's like 12 bucks, I think. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you're just instantly this, restarting the map. There's bucks. no load loading times at all. It's got the it's got I that think so. It's just it's got that trials HD restart. Just like it really does. That's pretty cool. And it, it feels really holy good. shit. <laughs> I know the the game gets just increasingly more challenging and and so entertaining. There there are moments where you know you're fucked. There's nothing you can do. You just kind of ride it out. But like trials HD, those don't matter because you instantly restart. I like this. This looks cool. I I might actually play this. Oh we'll no, see. it's 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 really good. You might even have this a, will be on my top ten. That's pretty cool. Honestly, I think it might end up on my top ten. I've only played through. There's, Spoilers. I believe there's at least eight worlds in the game, uh, ten levels to a world. Um, but each world just gets progressively more challenging and just introduces new ideas that are just so much fun. Wait, what the fuck? Okay. Yeah, like there there was I was fucked because there wasn't a truck in front of me, and the floor is lava. So once you hit the ground, it's game over. Nick, you know you should play what? XCOM 2. I know, is that is that out on console yet? What? It, next I week. Next week, really? I believe I so. I thought it was November. It was already out. Oh, is it November? No, I, I yeah. thought it was soon. But but there are a couple of cool things about the game. There are abilities you can purchase and gameplay modifiers. Uh, there's, for example, I don't use it that much in the footage because I've only played like two, three hours of the game thus far. But uh, you can slow down time while you're in midair. Uh, there is actually a uh, there's a grappling hook you can get. I'm I'm constantly using the the double jump ability that I purchased. Uh, Seems pretty much mandatory. How long is how long have Brad and, and Jack's head been cut off? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I didn't realize that. Okay, it's been going on for a while. Just, there we go. Oh, okay. Shit. Yeah, there you go. That literally, the way you just moved, Jack, it actually looked like you did just duck your head under the thing. <laughs> yeah. That was weird. Because it just, it just happened to coincide when you click the button. Uh, there is a super hot mode for this game. What does that mean? To where when you don't move, the game, the rest of the world is very, very slow. Oh. So you can be a little strategic in how you move and play. Okay, I'm going to get this game. But sure. what's, what is this going to be... Dope. What is going to be really fun with this game, and it's something I want to try out with the community, it's got Twitch integration Ooh. to where you can vote on the players, people can vote on obstacles modifiers and obstacles that happen in the game. Like, they can vote for an earthquake to happen, or double gravity, or uh, no gravity, almost. Dude, I want a mod on this where there's like, like the Jurassic Park scene when there, there's a whole bunch of those little ones growing through the fields. You know, the little ones. Yeah, the, the Gallimimus. Yeah, whatever, whatever they're called. You, I figured you'd. I want one like they're just dinosaurs rolling around. You got to jump on the dinosaurs. That'd be awesome. That would be cool. Yeah, this or far penises. Is, this far, it's only trucks. Penises. I mean, the work. trucks are kind of shaped like penises. That's what I'm saying. Get the skin in there. Yeah, I wonder, oh. I wonder how mod. <laughs> what? <laughs> the skins. I wonder how moddable this game would be actually. I don't know. I mean, it's a very small game yeah, size sure wise. It's, it's only like 400 megs max. Well, you ever get to jump on anything besides trucks? It's called uh, cluster trucks. Sometimes there Brad. are things you can jump on, but it's 99% trucks. I mean, the game is called Cluster Truck. So. That would be weird if it was. 
Oh, it does seem like something I would just play in a web browser, asshole. but... I mean, this this game is... An SUV it's, it's, might be it's good for what it is, um, but the soundtrack really makes it, because it's got some really fucking good loops. Yeah, Can you this do is a, a little game. bit? Like, what this, is the soundtrack like? This is absolutely a game I've actually got a sample of it on my, uh... Chain. This is absolutely a game I would play with my own custom soundtracks, which is the craziest metal I could find. I don't think you actually need it because it's really good, but uh, but that yeah, would you be. You certainly can. I wish I could broadcast this while playing like crazy metal because I that was would so be mad so about fun. that. Yeah, you went over. You should have been mad. I landed right in front of it. Thought All right, it. we need to move on. This looks cool. It's called Cluster. Can you imagine Truck. this in VR? Oh fuck that! God help would... us. I'd, There's... I'd be vomiting. I, I was gonna just, say. Just the, the, the third world. Vomit worlds, everywhere is what that. I guess it's, it's pretty like, holy shit, just the, watching this. The, the platforming in the third world has you jumping down from other ramps onto other trucks. It has a lot of like falling and everything. It's, Plus the truck. I, I the, uh, honestly, like, my biggest question is I want to see what, this, what a level in this game looks like, like, late game. Late game? I've only done three, maybe four worlds, hey, so... Look, Crispy's in chat. He's, he, he he's says, out my wiener. <laughs> 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 Alright, uh, it's called Cluster Truck. That's yeah. out next week. Check Fucking it out. Cool. Very I'm good. I, that, I might actually play that. That looks pretty cool. Um, Alright, uh, do, do we have... What... What would we... I know y'all had something y'all wanted to talk about news-wise. I know you, There's two things we can talk about that I have. At the moment, uh, we could talk about uh, the gameplay demo there was of Metal Gear Survive, and then the gameplay demo of Nier Automata. Roll that footage! Of uh, which one? Pick one. Okay. Pick Mich one and go with it. <clears throat> How about we do, if I can read... Give Let's us the bad news first. Let's do Nier Automata. No, that's the good news. That's the good news. So, let me go ahead and do this. Crispy, do not come to my house. It's too late. Don't... He's... He, I think it's too late. I think... I mean, he lives, like, right around the corner, so he's probably gonna be here. <laughs> oh, oh, he does. Oh, yeah. well, yeah, then hell, come over. Yeah, he, he's not far. Fuck it. Um... But this is... This is near Automata, and you know what? It looks pretty you know what? good. So, well, I mean, later on in this footage, too, they kind of show off the... The, the different is, camera angles, and, like, they straight up... Like go full isometric, and it it mm -hmm. becomes like a twin stick shooter. Also, like a side scrolling shooter too. Later on this footage, and that shit's so fucking cool because that was the kind of weird stuff that I was afraid was gonna kind of go away in this one. It was just gonna be kind of a straightforward, you know, polished platinum games action game. But I'm glad some of that weird like pers camera shifting is still in this game because that was very much like near one. Uh, the first near game. Do you want to know what my concern is here? I mean, this footage looks fun. It looks cool. It, it looks, looks like, like an action game. It looks yes. It looks like an like and not to not that that's a bad thing, but man, I I'm really hoping they they're able to cap. I mean, I want it to feel like an RPG. I want there to be a world to explore. But so they, this they is they the have, first footage I've seen of this game. Well, is this any bearing on the original near? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, it is in the I same know. universe. Uh, like, so I'm, like, my fact, question is, in fact, a recent trailer showed off two characters. Uh, that were in the first game. I mean, I didn't play yeah, too much of the original, of but part. I'm just like, why is this called Nier 2? I mean, it's Nier definitely, it's definitely yeah, it's because the same, it's the same lead, world. It's the same composer, it's the same world. You See, know? that's the problem. Like, the reason the, why you're asking that is because... That's, well, at least they didn't call it Nier 2. Like, like, look, 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 what, look, what, look what they go into. All they did was shift the camera up, and it goes can go full isometric. And it looks like a fucking, like... Bullet hell, almost. fucking contra. Whoa, yeah. that's fucking cool. Uh, so, it's called near because you know characters and art style, music, all that stuff. But at the same time, like the some of the first concept art we ever saw of this game looked RPG ish. Like I had these big, you know, open green spaces and looked like a like know. rolling hills and shit yeah. like that. Yeah, and then like everything they've shown since then has pretty much been like combat in these like warehouse looking rooms. Well, they've well, I mean, shown some stuff not, outside. Not that they're not going to have... Desert. I just want to know what you do in between these fucking awesome fights. Like, well, this I mean, fight looks fun as hell, this but is what are you doing by, in between? This is developed by Platinum, so... Yeah, it's gonna that's be why more of a lot of the focus game. is going to be on the combat and what they show. Sure, but, like, I want like I want, I want there to be some reassurance that, yes, there will be other things. I want this to still feel like a world. Like, there's still... 
things happening outside of So it's of not combat. an open world. I don't, They've I don't confirmed know, that. It doesn't have to be open world, but I, I, I'm is hoping... It, but it's not structured like a Zelda game or whatever. Like, no, like the original Nier was. Like the original Nier was. But, you know, it, I still want to get a sense of, like, I want there to be NPCs, I want there to be quests. Like a town. Even, if, even but, if it's not necessarily in an open structure, if it's yeah. more linear, that's fine. I just want to see more of the world. All, the, all we've seen so far has been these, like, warehouse-type environments where you're fighting yeah. big robots and shit. Well, they have shown some stuff out in the big giant desert, like, and that desert was huge. Okay, that's good. But, but, uh, you know, I mean, I, I completely agree with you. You know, I love that first game, but you know, I'm not the, the person who's controlling is trying to look up her skirt. That was weird. Um, <laughs> that was this awkward. Is TGS. Yeah, this was from TGS. So. But, but, like, I'm not gonna get my hopes up for that aspect of it. If it is a really great platinum action game, Dude, but it, it still has looks. it has the look and the music and the and the kind of the style of Nier, then you know I'll be happy. Honestly, this game should have never even fucking existed in the first place, especially not developed by Platinum Games. So like, I'm gonna kind of take what I can get and, and kind of be happy with it. It's like you know some games will come along like. Like look at Lords of Shadow, right? Where it's like I can't believe this is what they're doing to Castlevania. They're they're yeah. killing it, you know. And they gave it to some crappy developer. This is not that. This is this is like they're doing something good with it at least. This is a a, a weird dream come true, and I'm just the thing is like the combat in the original Nier was not good, not good, and it seems to me like they're but it had some unique elements to it. And you're right. This game necessarily didn't shouldn't exist because but it's you important, know, who, who but it's important to know, this isn't called Near Two though. I mean, it's called, no, well, but it is Automata. Near is in the title, right? But like, it's Automata. just one of those things. Like you could tell they, they they the combat wasn't very good in the first one. So what they did was, well, let's give it to the best fucking combat developers we can find. But it's almost kind of like that's great and all, but it could be to the detriment for everything else about the game that we love. Yeah. Like, I didn't love that game for the combat. I didn't necessarily even need to love the have combat. Have like platinum games like and the, ninja theory. You know, uh, for the like narrative yeah, and story, yeah. stuff, like an enslaved no, kind of story. Sure, for sure. Fucking for sure, man. But I don't. Combat system. Like the, the, I'm thinking. Of, is, I'm thinking that of, first game had like some really weird, kind of cool, quirky characters. It was a weird old dude, uh, you know, a fucking talking book. You know, it, it had it like like it had some weird, quirky character. characters. It, it but like the characters this, in this game. Seem like stylish and sexy and a little too cool, you know. Like, also, is this game gonna have like, you know, like voice acting and stuff? Like, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I would have I, to assume it, it's gonna have voice acting. But it, it, are the characters gonna be constantly like talking and stuff like they did in the first year? Are they gonna is are they gonna be, you know, talking to each other? And These are all the questions I desperately want answered. Like, like, like is it, like, I don't, know. I don't know. We'll see. And is this thing going to be localized in English? Yeah. You know, that first Nier was localized in English, or is it not going to be so much of an action the game that they don't even bother the giving them English do good voices? Over here. Platinum games do pretty well over no here. No Platinum games does, does good anywhere. I mean, that's the re reality. Um, but... This is due out in February, or am I losing my mind? But, but I, I was uh, thinking that this thing was going to launch, you know, worldwide, but have we heard any English? I, I don't know. I... I I don't know. I'm sure we'll get it. It looks dope. I'm glad all the shooting the combat. Are still there. The combat looks. Uh, can, can you you I can mean, they, you just combat in the footage, or can you not really do that? Like they at a certain point, really? or maybe this is not the footage I'm thinking of, where they they go full side scrolling and like zoom way out. Oh, that that's early on in the video. Actually. Oh, it's earlier. Okay, yeah. which which I, that was kind of crazy. Looking. February 23rd is what. Um, God damn. I don't know how to say that guy's name. That's the uh, the Wasman returns. Yeah, the Wasman returns. That's just a weird name. It's uh, February twenty third. So isn't that that's like a week after Neil everything comes else? Out, doesn't matter. Like Resident Evil. Listen, man, Resident Evil is January. Shit gets 24th. delayed into next year. Every time something gets delayed, it's always fucking February. And but then shit gets delayed out of there too. Yeah. So everything comes out when it always does. Never, never trust a release date. All right. Well, this looks cool. I'm very excited for yeah, it. I just, yeah, for sure. Oh, I definitely want to know more about the other. Not stuff. just that, but it kind of looks like a return to form for Platinum, which has been kind of doing these budget Activision titles. Yeah, lately. it definitely does not look budget to me. Yeah, no. So, well, then we've got this other game that's coming out. 
Oh, I haven't watched this yet. You haven't seen this? I have not seen <sighs> it. I, you know, honestly, a lot of people are giving it shit. I kind of think there's some aspects that are interesting. Uh, sure. Metal Gear Survive. Because it's, it's just, you know, it's it's just a get, fucking it's gonna get crucified. Metal Gear Solid Five mod. But for, it's going to be released as, what, 20 bucks or something like that? No. no I'm sorry, 39. It's 39 is what it's going to be. No, I think they said 30. 30? I think okay. that's what they said. But either way, yeah. standalone $30 game. It's not going to be a full oh, price game. Is it open world? Or it's so it's it Metal Gear world. Solid 5. And and people are saying, great. People are saying I mean, this is this is a cannibalized project. It supposedly it takes place on the Afghanistan map. I don't know about that for that's certain. That's a fucking game. Dude, that's a mod, man. No, I'll tell man. you what this is. This is fucking Undead Nightmare. For it, without the yeah, fucking is, yeah. awesome writing and characters and charm of Undead Nightmare. Precisely. I mean, uh, just five played great. This just looks For, like so. No, it it fucking did, man. But like me, you, and everyone else, by the end of that, we were fucking sick of it, dude. We we, we I, I what I didn't need was more Metal Gear Solid Five. The, the structure for the game wasn't right for that story, and the what story? It, it was kind of was kind of was, was too long. A story. It was just no. stretched out. I mean, it, it had the same problems. Honestly, I'm of the that, opinion that, that chapter two did. should have happened in the middle of. Chapter one. All right, let's, it was just let's, poorly paced. Let's talk about this. This is this is. I don't think it's gonna be too bad. Well, that, was, so, that was cool. So yeah, there's. I heard this described as Fortnite. Fortnite. Somebody on the bomb cast said, "Dude, you know what this game is? It's fucking Fortnite." Well, that's the thing, though. There is actually. Did that game ever come out? No. Still not. Still not. Jesus Christ! It's been what four it. years? It, you're you're gathering resources and you're setting traps because yeah. waves of zombies will attack your base. Yeah, there's there's a. Uh, you can actually set up base defenses, like yes. walls or fences or uh, machine gun turrets and things like that. Uh, the way the demo goes is that they have to approach uh, uh, this objective that's supposed to send a signal I know through exactly a wormhole. Where he is right now. There's a, there's a base up to the right, up the hill. Sorry. I don't think well, this is going to be too bad at all. I mean, like, I'm, I'm not going to get it. Absolutely you're not. looking then, at Metal Gear Solid Five. That's what's yeah. so fucking frustrating. But. There. So the way the way this what the way this goes is that they have to go to this objective and they activate it and then they have to defend it for several waves of these zombie things. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think I think the frustration is this absolutely should have been treated like more of a DLC pack for Metal Solid Five, but they're treating it like a fucking. They're they're like actually they're also making these these player characters I guess particularly weak because they've introduced a, a Metal Gear Solid Three style. Healing system that you have to do with co-op partners. Yeah, like you know, the surviving. Well, to try and emphasize the whole survive thing, I suppose. Yeah. But I, I know as far as, as far as Konami's options is what they had to do with the franchise, either make a sequel, reboot. I thought or they do were getting out of the video game development business altogether. That's the impression I was. Well, given. this and Pro Evolution Soccer are pretty much like their only franchises. Yeah. But Pro Evolution Soccer is like good. That's that's the crazy thing. All they oh, make PC. is fucking but soccer. And, do we really want this to be the last fucking thing we ever get from Metal Gear? Like, <laughs> all I doubt it's gonna be the last thing we get from Metal Gear. It's just no. But I mean, given the three tangible choices they had of re rebooting from like an original game, or making a sequel, or doing a spinoff. That's probably the best of the three options, quite honestly. No, 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 no. Yeah. Well, this this is like boring and like safe and like safe. Yeah, exactly. I'm not I would have I rather them it. find a completely new developer and to try to do their own take on Metal Gear because you knew they didn't have enough people left to like do it themselves. Kojima is gone. You know, just just we understood what happened. You know, it was all out there. Let's just give somebody else a shot, you know? You know, I don't think you needed Kojima to make a cool Metal Gear game, but this isn't it. This doesn't seem that cool. This just looks like a fucking Metal Gear Solid Five mod. That's co-op, and that's definitely not it, something I want to play. It seems like DayZ for Metal Gear Solid Five. But I, no, because you're on a team. You know, you're, you're not in this big world with all these other random players who are trying to kill you or help you or make alliances. Yeah, it's no, not that no. sophisticated. I mean, calling it Day Z is an insult to fucking Day Z. I'm talking about, like, the basic ideas of Day Z. You get this map, you're on there trying to survive, there are zombies. That's all I'm saying. Oh, well, I mean, I'm glad that you acknowledge that they could probably make a Metal Gear game without... Uh, Kojima, because yeah, it seems like do it, it seems like the obvious reaction is, well, he's not involved in it, therefore it's going to be shit we're kind of... No. The, the thing is, Metal Gear has always been this weird kind of... Like, from entry to entry, it's always been very weird and different, and like... The thing is, there... Yeah, you know, so, so 
so to have a, no, a new Metal Gear ca- game come out that's completely different than the last, it's not that's like not, this crazy fucking thing. You know, just get a get a good developer. You know, like take a that could tell a decent story. You know, and and, and just run with it. You know, it, it might fall flat on its face, but at least that's a more interesting thing to happen than this. I agree. No, I don't think this is too surprising, quite honestly. And, 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 and like, I don't mean to be, I'm not down on this because Kojima's not involved. Because honestly, if Kojima was still a fucking Konami and they released just DLC for Metal Gear Solid Five, I probably wouldn't be that interested in the first place. Especially if it was fucking co-op, you know? It, it, it's just... You know, it, even Kojima was like, kind of talking shit. I think, right? And yeah, no, he, he was like, one he was like uh, Metal Gear is like, you no, know, he goes, I would, have added, he goes I would have added mechs to it. What the? I mean, it's <laughs> fucking Metal Gear. Well, there's probably going to be a mech. I don't. Metal Gear survives. It just seems so fucking lazy. That is MGS, right? I, like, as bummed as I was, I was, I was excited to see what was really next for this series even if it was a train wreck I'm surprised there was something exciting there was nobody else I like I was given the distinct impression the way they fucking bailed on Silent Hill the way they bailed on Metal Gear Solid and the way that they started making all these fucking shitty pachinko machines I was under the impression that they were just completely just like bailing out bailing out of the industry the video game industry entirely and they were going to be focused on the pachinko business and they were they were not going to do anything with these properties. No. So to see them even do this was surprising to me. Like, I don't think well. I, I feel like I was under the impression we weren't going to get anything else from them. Whether it's uh, a new Metal Gear I, entirely. Konami's own or, arrogance is why they didn't give this to another developer. Most likely. Well, 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 I mean, also like, because they already have all the assets and they. Sure. Yeah. Like I say, from their perspective, I want to see what this game is going to fucking all. sell like because. You know, I think you, because it has Metal Gear in the name and it's got zombies and it's, it's 30 bucks. You know. But have you looked at the fucking response on YouTube? It's like, oh my god, it's crispy. Hey! The response on YouTube has been like, like, it has twice as many dislikes as it has likes. Like, it's it's one of those videos. Yeah, but but you also got to understand that there's a wider audience that I think Metal Gear sells to. I mean, it's not like crazy Call of Duty numbers or anything. No. But it does sell to people because, hey, it's a military-looking dude with guns or and the zombies. And a spear, apparently. Um, so, you know, the subtle of those people who are not even, uh, who don't even know who fucking Kojima is, you know? They're just like, oh, I've, I like those Metal Gear games. I'll, I'll pick that up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Chris said they're fucking. Hey, like I said, this just looks like a Metal Gear Solid 5 mod, and I was sick of Metal Gear 5 Chris by the end of Metal Gear Solid 5. In fact, I was sick of Metal Gear Solid 5 probably like 10 hours before I was done with Metal Gear Solid 5. I just, I wanted to see a weird new thing, and, you know. Something weird and different. Is anyone surprised? Yeah, uh, Chris, Crispy's watches. Crispy's like here. Weird new stuff, but like kind of in the same. It's on the same Afghanistan map. That's such a bummer. I recognize man. this but building he's walking into. It's Afghanistan in a like in an alternate dimension, which is it's cool. like it, <laughs> it's. I, I drew the comparison to Undead Nightmare from Red Dead. Yeah, but. I mean, you never know. It could surprise, right? It, it could surprise. It, it, it's it's Undead a, Nightmare took place in the same map as Red Dead. Yeah, yeah, but Undead Nightmare was great not because it was on the same fucking map, but because it had all this great writing and characters, and it was like this weird like B horror thing and that. New mechanics. The, the whole like town mechanic and like like clearing yeah, out yeah. the no. undead nightmare was a don't great forget about the like, like rare don't example. forget about all those cool horses you could get i i am yeah. not this the four horsemen oh, yeah. the bigfoot i'm storyline. not a red dead like cox like dick sucker I like am. a lot of other I people am. are like i understand i i still I think the end of that game is brilliant I but i don't have that. this huge love for rockstar open world games but even I understand, uh, even I will acknowledge the brilliance of Undead Nightmare. I think I think comparing this to that is a little isn't fair. One, we don't know a lot about that, but two, that's a very high bar that you were. I actually know people that bought Undead Nightmare who didn't even play Red Dead. Yeah, Nightmare. I mean, and just enjoyed it's, it. For it's what really it was, fucking man. cool. That's a great Halloween time game, you know. This is uh, this could be cool, but it's it's it's. It, the fact that it seems so Metal Gear Solid 5, that it is Metal Gear Solid 5, that it feels like a mod. Without Mother Base. 
right? No, I didn't really. No, yeah, they they all. No, I, I, hated, saw, I, I saw hated him use the. Uh, he used the. Uh, what were we called? What was it called? The Fulton. Uh, he used the Fulton, but it didn't do anything. This no, look. This yeah, looks like a the, mode it, it distract, that would be in like a Call zombies. of Duty. They have it's one that like they have one now that's like a that's like a like a portal wormhole. Like yeah. a wormhole that it goes. You understand that this game seems like something that would be a mode in like a Call of Duty game. Not like specifically Call of Duty, but you know Call of Duty comes out and it has this zombie mode. This feels like the zombie mode of Metal Gear Solid 5, not a new Metal Gear game. But they even took the solid off, you know? I, it, Oh, More like Metal Gear Weak! <laughs> and, you know, as batshit crazy as that narrative is, that is why a lot of us go to Metal Gear. That's and what I'm saying! This seems like, so, like, systems-driven, like, mechanics-driven, which is not a bad thing, because Metal Gear Solid V controlled well, but it's not like... Take GTA. Okay. For, for example, right? Please. And like and like here is an open world game that adopts GTA mechanics, but it has none of like the cool writing and characters and, and like and like humor of like a GTA game. Technically on paper that still seems like a solid game to play because you're Sleeping driving around dogs. cars and you're and you're but but you know I was just gonna say, is it confirmed that this is gonna be like a like a full price $60? No, it's thirty a thirty dollar standalone thing. Thirty bucks? I mean, this uh, is a pretty safe title. That's yeah. That, I mean, I feel um, like um, this could be a, this could be an easy switch. But like, if Umbra Umbrella Core is ten dollars, <laughs> that doesn't mean I want to no, play it that much more. No, you know, for sure. But Umbrella Core is fundamentally shitty. Like at the very least, this is cribbing from a game that we've already played. And like, no, you know, I know you well. got bored with it, but like, it was a fun game. Like, no, but have, absolutely. Have, like, I mean, no I think built mechanics. And absolutely. zombies are cool. I don't know. Oh, shit. Zombies are cool. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> not uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna. Tenure. I'm not gonna shit on this game. I guess as much as everyone else does. I'm not gonna play it because I don't do co-op stuff. I don't do really do the whole zombie thing either. But as f for what it is from Konami's perspective, one is from their perspective, it's Untamed the most Konami. obvious thing That's to do. It. I think until any other bigger project comes along. Sure. Yeah. I mean, they're just leeching off of a game that they know sold well and played well and. You know, from their perspective, it makes sense. People would like to shit on the whole, oh, the wormhole thing is so weird. Metal Gear's always been weird. That's I, awesome. I, I, yeah, I like, that's like, the cool stuff. I felt like that's a stupid that's argument. Right. I don't but, think anyone's worried about this being canon. canon. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, 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 this, is, this does I guess seem I remain, a little tower defense. Well, so, I guess so, I remain so you optimistic is, is what I guess I'd say. I, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I... I I'm excited. Like I kind of, I I would much rather this be like a good game than it be a bad game. Like I I hope it's gonna be. Good. I'm, so, I'm, so you weren't here earlier, but somebody on the bombcast who actually played a fair bit of Fortnite in like pre-release, oh, yeah. it says that this seems a lot like Fortnite. But this is like a crib of Fortnite. But you know, it's yeah, it, it's. I I'm more interested in like whatever bad shit thing Konami decides to green light as far as like a weird new team probably western who decides to do their own take on telling a Metal Gear story with all new mechanic and world and characters and bosses but see, but like that that even if that's a train wreck <laughs> like that seems wholly more interesting it, than this it'll be a train wreck because they will they will try to make a simple story that makes sense and that's not what Metal Gear is at all like a yeah. Mercury game like, kind yeah. of take on it yeah. I think you're, I mean, are you honest, saying Mercury Steam. Mercury Steam. Mercury, Mercury yeah. Steam. Mercury Steam. But I'm no like Kojima, you know, wiener slobber. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like a what? lot of other people out there, like I fully believe that like something great can still be made. It, Mm -hmm. Even if, if Koji was not around, you know, I always give the example of Zone of the Ender's Second Runner is a far better game than the first one. Yes. And Kojima wasn't involved with that one at all. Oh, he wasn't? No. I didn't know. Hmm. Or, you know, he directed the I first game. I guess kind of making a weird transition. Is anyone surprised that Death Stranding, he made those comments that, yeah, it might not be out to like 2018? No, not Is anyone really surprised by that at all? He said, he said before 2020. When, when he, yeah. When he, before the Olympics is what he said, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, he they did pretty much come out and say that what we saw at Death Stranding at E3 was pretty much all that existed. All that exists, yeah. Is in like, and they said something he, about a female, a possible female co-op protagonist. Yeah, yeah. protagonist. Game and play. he also that's they more also news said, than this, to be honest. They also but, said apparently it's open world. Yeah, kind of in the same vein. Everyone was like, at oh, this point, who knows dude, what the yeah, fuck it actually yeah, is? Death Stranding isn't a thing. It's a trailer. Kojima doesn't even know. It's what a it's concept about. right now. Like he doesn't even know what the fuck it's about. Like. 
<laughs> he makes up as he goes along. Kind that's of. fine, dude. <laughs> that's great. Like, I think they're I fucking. Like... I think they fucking. I think Death Stranding is literally like what they did with the Breaking Bad, <laughs> the final season of Breaking Bad, where they wrote they wrote an episode that was a flash forward, and then had no idea right. how they were gonna yeah. get there. Now, how and they're like, do and then how do we get there? And but it worked I, out really well for Breaking Bad. I, I don't know how it's gonna see, go for Death Stranding. I can definitely see uh, Kojima use advancing or you know going on top of the uh, co-op thing, or not co-op, but. That whole kind of open worldish kind of thing, I can I can see him advancing from that a little bit, I'll which makes sense going to co op. I'll tell you what, maybe, maybe we can end on this in this topic, but like, Death Stranding, whatever the fuck it is, is way more interesting than what absolutely this is. sure. But I mean, if someone in chat was joking, yeah, but, but if Konami came out and announced and said, "Hey, we're giving the rings to." Mercury Steam, we're going to see what they can do with the Metal Gear license. It would still be more It would still be more interesting. Even though it would be a disaster. Even though this could play great. You know what? When does this come out? Is it this year? This couldn't be this year. Or, I, they well, said okay. it's Actually, next of year, it could definitely. Be. Yeah, yeah that, it's cool. um, such a bummer to me, though. I don't have three friends. <laughs> <laughs> says, says the guy sitting on a couch with five people. Well, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, I'm an adult male, okay? You know, scheduling that shit and, like, getting people together to play anything We're not, is... I know, stuff. like... like like, I feel like I haven't seen you. We in, never do anything. Yeah, we like. never. I mean, it's yeah. rare that all of y'all get together to actually play something, though. Admit it. We don't need to get together to, in a room we, to play something. Together, I'm not saying a room. We but. get together to play the game called Life. The not game of that. life. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's let's move on from this. It takes a fucking wedding to get us all in the same room. Hey, you know what? That was fun. Well, and possibly a funeral, but we haven't had one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. Way to be a downer. We'll see. Way to be a downer. <laughs> All right. Nolan died in Greece. No, <laughs> he's not. You can't say that until he's back. Oh, okay. He's God damn it. <laughs> well, I mean, he hasn't updated Facebook. Worst in a while. case scenario, he does die. No, I think he. But won. I become like some sort of weird, like prophetic, like, you know. God. Well, <laughs> well, the the Gwent beta opened up today, oh, and he hasn't responded to it at all. Oh That's shit! That's probably so. he's playing it. And Bernadette's probably pissed. I'm sorry. <laughs> or they're playing it together. Or somebody stole his phone. Or I mean, somebody stole his phone. Or Any he's number playing of... Boner Town. Yeah, <laughs> Boner Town. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> all right. Um, it's okay. They're married now. They're or probably you... fucking all the time. Yeah, but they... <laughs> yeah. Right. Not at all in the eleven. Because they're married. Yeah. In the eleven years leading yeah. up to the <laughs> Oh my god. But I love that that idea that he had to go to that marriage counseling and with a straight face tell them that they. <laughs> oh, so that's where the penis goes. Oh, we've been together for oh. eleven years. Oh my god, guys, we can't talk about this. No, we can't. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, it's time for Patreon. <laughs> oh wait, did you Community. one one more little tack on the news? Did you guys hear about? Fucking Palmer Lucky. <laughs> what happened? He get hit by a... Apparently, he's a big time Trump supporter. He's been funneling oh God, a lot dude. of money into no. that into Milo. What's his Is that faces. a joke? No, it's real. It's real. He just like it oh just my came out. God. They like I, I guess the Daily Beast just posted oh. a big article. Oh. Oh. So if you're looking to get into VR, maybe an HTC. He doesn't Vive? wear shoes. <laughs> he doesn't wear shoes. That's Wait. what Joseph said on <laughs> Joseph on Twitter is like this just goes to prove my old axiom of never trust a man in flip flops. <laughs> oh my god! I love That's it. really weird because he was on the bombcast at, at the E three shows, multiple E three shows, uh, and he seemed so normal. Uh, you can never tell. So you, can, you know, <laughs> you can never tell. Well. Hey, that HTC Vive's looking really great now. <laughs> We're the star of VR as well. Oh my god! Let's not get out of ourselves. Hey. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do uh, let's do community. Of course, Nolan's not here. He's he's on his honeymoon. So when he gets back, he will return to doing. Community and all of its glory. I'm just gonna read Patreon questions because that's what that's what you all came here for, right? It's what you all here for. This is what you wanted. This is what you wanted. Questions. This is what you wanted. Questions from our beloved patrons. Our first one comes from Dante Ramirez. Hey guys, any chance previous supporters of the month are gonna go? No, I'm not. Next question. <laughs> you should already filled these questions before. You no, I saw that. I saw. He's, he's just wondering about some of the people who haven't gotten their T-shirts yet, and I'm aware. <laughs> Like, he doesn't I'm give a, a shit. I'm aware. That one on the air. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. That's why. That's why I did it for the for the lols. For the lols. Uh, the metal button says, "Anyone ever get caught jerking your gherkin? It what? fucking sucks. Masturbating, Brad. Have you ever been caught? Have you ever been caught? 
Uh, there's the one time. No! There's the one time where I accidentally left my stream on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'll tell you what, man. That's that's like I have to make sure like every computer and electronic in my house is like powered the fuck Nick down. Nick unplugs everything, I, like, puts it all in a box. Puts like tin foil hat on. I, I, I turn out all my lights, all my turn off all my. I actually go to the fuse box and turn everything off and light a candle. <laughs> all right. A scented candle. A scented candle. Lights out. But it makes it all the more <laughs> worth it after all that. It's time to jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Oh when the lights god. go so how do you out, jerk it to internet porn then? It's a laptop, man. You just okay, well you gotta just hope your battery lasts long. You gotta have a good imagination, okay? You guys just need to get more ambidextrous. Or that. Alright, uh the next question comes from Mr. Green Toes. Since Jack is appearing oh on this podcast, how do you I'd like that? to ask him a question. Jack. I don't even know who who's this guy's name? Mr. Green Toes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh Jack, if you were in total control of the four-player crew, how would you change them? Like as people? Honestly? <laughs> While we're at it. You turn us all into retro gamers. I'd make Nick you? a girl. Please make me, <laughs> please make me thinner. If you I'd, have that power. I'd make them all play on CRT televisions. That would actually be one of the I conditions. I have feelings. Hey, I want a fucking you, CRT. You can't, <laughs> this guy's actually asking for it. You can't play a game that's come out since uh, after, before 2001. I would I would encourage more of the guys to indulge in the in the retro scene a little. Hey, you're talking Absolutely. to them. This guy's already. You got know what? Covered. And he knows, you know what? Every time you come on the show, Jack, I always leave with this feeling of like I want to play some old game. Dude, my pin tweet is, says that it says my aim for this account is to talk about old games and get you thinking about them. Well, too. I am you trying. To, I am actively trying to decide. Absolutely. the best way to go about playing Final Fantasy. Hey, VI. I've, I've been playing a shit ton of old games this year. What yeah. have you been playing? Real I've quick, been playing play. Super Metroid. I finished that. Dude, finished. My copy is in the mail for the first time. Dang. He's getting a fucking really. You haven't SNES played copy. it yet. Oh, I've never played it. Dude, it's fucking tits, OG man. cut. You're going to fucking love it, man. Just, just for the love of God, it's, don't play it in one city. It's the dankest. Uh, uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I'm playing... I'm going through... Uh, I'm going through Link to the Past right now. That's right, yeah. So, I yeah. still... I, I haven't got that yet, but that is one I definitely need to pick up. So, you know. Yeah, see, this guy's getting twisty. I mean, maybe I am in control. I'm you know, Just getting yeah, there. Yeah. Just because it's old doesn't mean it's not better than a lot of the stuff coming out right now. All right, our next question. <laughs> Said the oldest member of the group. <laughs> <laughs> our next question comes from Chai Tai. He says, what is the worst soundtrack you can think of in a game? For any reason, bad music, wrong theme, etc. My p quick pick goes to Injustice. It doesn't, have, it doesn't have a soundtrack. No music plays during a versus match, and it's boring. <laughs> boring. That's a good reason to have, that's a, that's a good pick. If it doesn't fucking have one. Which, which game? Uh, Injustice. Oh, yeah. Because well, we talked about that when they showed a footage for Injustice 2, I think. Yeah. I was like, where the fuck is the music? No music. Apparently, they did that in the first one, Superhero too. Superhero fights are very serious. No music. So what is an example of a bad soundtrack? That's harder to think of than a good one. Yeah, it's it one is. Good ones. Undertale? Are we looking around the room? Doing the Undertale. Undertale. Looking around the room. Undertale. Oh, man. <laughs> Brad, I fully expect a you to A bad have soundtrack. A bad soundtrack. Damn. You just forget the bad ones. As you do. Yeah, like, that's I, I, don't, I don't remember like seething about a game's like soundtrack. I know a lot of people seem Oh! To... Oh. Okay. Oh. There, there was a game. Oh. There was a game. There was a game. Fuck. No, it, it was like, it was like a... What is a game? <laughs> I, know a lot of people, a game? I know a lot of people would probably argue that they think Devil May Cry is a bad, tra bad soundtrack. Devil May Cry 4 has a shit soundtrack. <laughs> I would wholeheartedly disagree. Oh, Blue Dragon! <laughs> Blue Dragon. You're probably the only person who has played that, though. Right? Oh, um, no. Uh, fuck it. Blue He's Dragon's kind of right. Yeah. At, least, at least the boss battle music was well, terrible. That, that choice the boss battle music every Blue Dragon soundtrack. is so bad, or I had to stop playing it. Biohunter says it right. Resident Evil Director's Cut. That soundtrack is an absolute miscarriage. <laughs> oh. To the original Resident Evil game. Really? What was so bad about it? It Okay. It, how is it different, I guess? Is it's, the it's incredibly different to the original. The ori original sound is cheesy and is like whatever is that game is, B movie as that game is and attempts to be like this soundtrack's pretty cool. Like it's it is atmospheric. The original one just goes way, way overboard with the whole cheesiness of it. You mean the director's cut? Yeah, the director's cut. Um There was a, there was a fucking game. You know what on the on, on the flip side of that, you know what game had an Amazing soundtrack, Resident Evil Remake. Yes. 
fucking incredible. Absolutely. The save mm. room music in, in Resident Evil Remake, one of my favorite tunes ever. Even though it's like a four second loop. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> I could fucking sleep to that, man. It's so good. Oh, I can't think of it. There was something I, pl- I played or I saw recently that was like like a shitty like sequel by like a shitty... Div- oh! Metroid Prime Federation Force. Oh, <laughs> it has sad. the Metroid Prime name. Low key. Which are games that had amazing soundtracks. I mean, you, you, you can at least admit that. That's some good fucking Did music. Did you spend two minutes playing that up? No, no, I was trying to think of it because it was something recently, but it made me so angry. I don't buy it. If, 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 if anything, the most disappointing part of Federation Force is that it's like some uninspired, shitty, like Star Wars wannabe knockoff music when, like, I feel like Metroid Prime or all the Metroid games have, have had very, like, distinct soundtracks. It was super I think disappointing. Super Metroid's actually got a really atmospheric yeah. soundtrack. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. All right, next question. I'm uh, sorry, I got to open my... Okay, um... All right. Um, Rockmaster, Rockmaster says, if you had a child, what game or games would your kid absolutely need to play? No, there'd be a regiment. Let's be realistic here for a second. Let's let's make sure we're picking games that are appropriate for children. No. No. I'm just I'm just practicing on crispy for my child. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Brad's been so doing that first for they years. Show Final Fantasy Tactics. Then they play Super Mario. Would you like sit? sit would you, what age would you, you like introduce sit him, that, sit him on your knee and just kind of? Now here's here's what so I would do. Some. Have you played Mario World? I'm way too anal retentive. Like if I was gonna do that, if I was gonna commit to doing that, and I had a child, I would have a, I would have a spreadsheet, yeah. and I would for every year of their life, starting whenever I decided, whatever year I just I decided they were gonna start playing games. You I would like I would ma- I would map it out like in their first year they're going to play this. This then, is the rest and of your life. Older, no, no, no. Work, and then you I'd catch them but like daddy, one day Legend of Dragoon home. is so mediocre. <laughs> like no, they, come, they come home from school one day like with one of their friends copies of some new like Call of Duty 19 and you're like what is this? Where did you get this? Who gave this to you? <laughs> I learned it from watching your stream, Dad. <laughs> you were going to start with COD 2. Oh my god, what? no. For me, Doom. OG Doom. OG Doom. What about... See, that's a good place to start, though. I, 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 I mean, shit holds and up. And then your kids are like, you have to use your hands? That's like a baby game. I would, uh... I, I would... <laughs> nice I would, uh, <laughs> future reference. All right, here's I would, a I would book in, I, would, I would map it out over the years, but I would bookend it. I would start them with Doom, like OG Doom, and then it would build up and culminate... Well, no, to, to Call of Duty. To, <laughs> no, no, to, to Doom 2016. No, to Doom 2, because that's where it culminates to. That's hey, New Doom. New Doom's fucking old. No, Doom New is Doom's really good. stinking New, good. New Doom's good. You're right. New so Doom. you start with Doom. Then let them play Doom. like Doom, Doom 3D. The then just skip all the way to Fear. And then play Doom 2016 and say, yeah, that was kind of no, like those good ones. No, no, the important no. thing no. is you scare the shit Half-Life, out of them early. Medal of Honor, too. Allied Assault they, deserves attention. Basically no anything on PC. No, no, no. You're all wrong. The answer is you lock the kid in a room for the first five years of their life. Then, on their fifth birthday, you sit them down and you make them play Dark Souls with the Donkey Konga drums. No death run. And if they fail, they go back in the closet for another five years. And they keep doing that until they either die or get it right. I think death... I think death, I think death would come first on that one, honestly. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's how you make the ultimate game. <laughs> Has anyone ever done the Donkey Konga drums? Yes. We, someone we, on someone on Good Games done quick. I'm sure you do like called. the Guitar Hero mm. thing, right? Too. Yeah, did, yeah, probably. They did, they've done Guitar Hero. They did the That's dunk. insane. Probably the drums and Rock yeah. Band. All right, next question comes from Michael. No, you wait, wait, wait. The you'd Beat have him, Mania you'd controller. Him, you'd have him play No Man's Sky and, and only come out of his room until he gets to the center of the universe. Oh, and explored every. Apparently, that every only takes plan. like thirty hours. <laughs> <laughs> Without food and sleep, I was starting with Demon Souls though. So my kid's not Dude, one of these people actually, who acts actually, like Dark Souls is the series. With Demon Souls actually is what I would but do. But Bloodborne's the best one. All right, Michael. Our Very next true. question comes from Michael. It says, "What's the scariest movie you've seen in the past fifteen years?" Fifteen. Fifteen. Years. That would be why two thousand. Is the Ring two thousand one? If can we can I can I say the ring? If it's the ring, it's the ring. I'm pr- that I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I think it's the ring. The ring might be uh, fifteen it, years. I think that works. The ring would be up there for me, but honestly, I'm gonna go. I'm and I've said this before. The original paranormal. The just the I'm just the original. Hey, that's a that's a good choice. The original paranormal activity has never has scared me worse than just about any movie I've seen in my entire life. And, and so to the, a, and to an extent, the second one got me as well. Nope. 
Someone in chat just said it. The nightmare. The nightmare. What was that the fucking nightmare? documentary oh, about sleep paralysis. Dude, oh. one, of, one of the mo <laughs> most scary movies recently. It's not as scary as more tense. It follows. Yes, yeah. that's good. Well, that movie's Re just in cool. recent that, memory. That is just a memory. really oh, original I, idea. Yeah. I love it follows, but I, I mean, it didn't like get under my skin. No, I've been there I've been were a few of, scenes in that yeah. movie that got under my skin. Yeah, and it sure. usually involves seeing something off in the distance. Yeah, it's not what you see. Like, that's it's, a it's, penis. It's really not what you see. It's it's, it's what you don't see. You know. Yeah. But recently, I've been thinking a lot about the Blair Witch because I was meant to go see the new Blair Witch this weekend, but I heard I'm probably going to end up seeing it. I saw. I saw. I, s I did see. Um, I, I did watch the Blair Witch okay. Project recently. I'm Brett, that Brad, I just want to. This is this is kind of unrelated, but I wanted to bring it up because I saw um, Don't Breathe this past weekend. Yeah. Solid. Thanks for the warning on that, man. What? What? what is, is that? What fucking one is turkey that? baster. Yeah. I was not ready for that. It, no, it's gross. What one is that? Up somebody's butt. These these thieves break into a, a <laughs> blind guy's house. Blind the blind guy. Okay, yeah. Oh, Why oh, was God. their hair though? That is just. I mean, they made it grosser than <laughs> it needed to be. Let's not talk about it. But it did, no, didn't no, it? No, 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 no. No, I'll tell you later. But it was man. something that was made so much grosser than it. I saw the half in the bag about it. That's all I ever need to see of that film. Of what? Half in the bag. Half Red Letter Media. Oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, um, all right, let's move on from this question. Um, I'm surprised someone didn't say... Uh, see, uh, Chris, uh, sorry, we had a lot of questions long. this week, even though I posted it late. So Just I'm gonna have to. I might have to skip. I apologize. There's a few questions I'm gonna have to skip. Um, Chris P. Ooh, what? Chris P. Not this no. is okay. not you. What do you think are the best and worst games from the following franchises? All right, I'm going to just list them off one by one. Okay. Best and worst games. This is interesting. I like, <laughs> it. I like it. Grand Theft Auto. The best is five. Worst is one. Yeah, the worst. Probably. I mean, in 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 ascending order. Are we? Are we I, really? Here's I the question. Are, are, are we really? Are we realistically? Because Vice City's better than three. San Andreas is better than Vice City. Four. San oh, Andre four is like a misstep. All right. Guess. Okay. Here's the question. Are you realistically going to compare post pre and post GTA three games? Oh, because I feel like that's not fair. He said series. He said series. Do, okay, okay, okay well, the series. From, if, but even if you go from three to five, it is yeah, still pretty much three, three and five. Vice City, San Andreas, like four, I guess, just because it was like bigger and had a lot of stuff in it, and then like five is. But GTA is one of those series, kind of like Yakuza, that's got better with every. Mo th for the yeah. most part, with I the exception of four, with the exception I think of five four. is still, five is easily the best. That being said, the expansions for four were better than four. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the, yeah, like the Lost, the Lost and, and the Damned and the Ballad of Gay Tony. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've only played four and five and Lost and the Damned. You don't play three. Really? I've never well, played Vice City and San Andreas. I mean, I've played a little bit of three Vice, Vice City, City and San. Andreas. Dude, Vice City is. I've dope. been talking about this. I'm. I might actually be starting Vice City soon. Vice City is time. pretty. Wait, Vice City is one of my favorites. It? I don't know yet. Um, all right, the next one is Final yeah. Fantasy. Best and worst. So here's the problem. Okay. Here's the problem. <laughs> this is gonna turn into a war. This, is, this is nostalgia. <laughs> this Six one. and thirteen. Six is the worst. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, seven and twelve. I didn't like. You gotta specify which seven oh, you think best, twelve is the worst. Twelve worst. I didn't like twelve. You played thirteen. Twelve? You think twelve is the worst? Oh, I stopped at twelve. I haven't played. Yeah, that's gonna be subjective so. to what like, you play. Like twelve is your worst one. Yeah. He's oh, only, you didn't play, he's yeah, only yeah. played. You didn't play any. Nine. You didn't play any of the like actual really bad ones. <laughs> I mean, Actually, the ones that are after my right favorite. Now. My to me the best is nine. And the and the worst and keep in mind I haven't played one through six so I'm having to exclude those. Uh, favorite is nine. Least favorite is thirteen. Even though the like thirteen one, thirteen one, is worse. Best thirteen two and thirteen three, both better than thirteen. Best one. seven undeniably. Worst. I want to say 12 because I really didn't like it. Thirteen didn't exist as far as I'm concerned. And ten, I almost. Dropped simply because I cannot stand. If a game, Titus. quote unquote, didn't exist as Jesus. far as I'm concerned, Jesus. wouldn't that make it worse than the, the one where that did, you actually played? Where Possibly. did you stop in ten? I completed ten. Oh, you, you completed it? Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I, ten has the best gameplay, but I could not stand the characters. How much yeah. of twelve did you play? You know what? I only played like maybe five hours of it. Okay. okay. I See, thought I, the you didn't even was, get to the gambit system. I hated the combat. I hate the combat. Get to the combat. All right, we need, we need to move on. We need to move on. I appreciate all, everyone's answers. Last one in his list, Mario. Really? Mario? Mario World, the worst. I mean, I 
mean, the Mario worst? the best. Well, the, there's no real, like... Is the best. 64 is the best. Ah, but is it, though? Mm. I mean, you, you play it now, it's kind of shit. <laughs> no, we play, I played it very recently. It is. Dude. 64 is shit? It, play it now. Dude, we, I'm on the fence of, like, like, maybe, like, maybe 64... In one day. I'm on the fence. <laughs> Somehow. No. And thinking that maybe 64... Could even be better than Mario World. Are we even talking like the mainline entries, or are we talking it's about just Mario? Mario, Mario. Oh, oh like Mario God. Tennis is the worst. You know what? That's what I'm saying. Mar- they, need to be, <laughs> yeah. they need to be platformers, but all their platformers have been good. That's the thing. Yeah. I would say the worst is Super Mario Brothers. You know, like the, the first, first one, one on NES. Not, it's not a bad game, but it's the least compelling. The series has kind of like gotten better with age pretty regularly I'd, I'd, I, it's probably the last one i would play right now you know i've never completed I mean, a maybe mario like game in its entirety at all new super mario bros on the ds I'm, new uh, super mario bros was really good yeah i, I mean that's the thing it was fucking fucking mario gal an argument made from mario galaxy is the best i think that game is mm-hmm. fucking incredible the it's a good game but nah it, it, no, sunshine. Nick. Oh, remember he had the fucking jetpack. Yeah, sunshine? fuck sunshine. I love sunshine. Sunshine's a good game. I like sunshine. Hey, none of them are bad. Here's dude. the crazy thing. You could say you could Luigi's say Luigi's Mansions. You the could best. say Mario Sunshine is the worst, and it still would be okay because that game is still great. Yeah, they're all good. What about Silent Hill? It's the only I, reason why Nintendo still makes consoles. I'm sorry, that's not part of the question, Jack. The I'm best Silent Hill. <laughs> you want you want to know my you want to know my answer? I would say uh, the, the obvi- two and two, two, two they're such, all mediocre. Two is such the obvious <laughs> one. one. One is the best one. It's, it's homecoming, isn't it, for you, the worst? Fuck no. The worst? Downpour is the absolute worst. No, downpour is... Why would you say fuck no to homecoming? Dude, honestly, I have, I'm having a really hard time because I'm, I'm still planning Are, on doing my top five Silent Hill games. And downpour is going to be downpour way up is there. Way shit, up there for Way me. up there? Dude, it's... it's yeah. Is so, what, okay, na- name... Okay. But... Silent no, Hill no, no. 2 is my favorite. I, I, Silent Hill 2 is my favorite. Sure. I mean, that's everyone's fucking favorite. What What I'm saying is, you said Downpour's way up there. I want to know what mainline Silent Hill games are below Downpour for you. Well, you have to wait and watch my... Uh, oh. Shattered Memories. <laughs> dude, Shattered Memories is great. In fact, yeah, but I was it, thinking about... I was thinking about it's on the same tier as the others? Let's be but honest. dude, I'm thinking... Like, I recently played all those games with the... I stopped it almost at the end of 3, or halfway through 3. And I gotta play 4 still, before I do my top 5. But Silent Hill Pachinko is the best. <laughs> Yeah. We're not okay. We're moving on. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think one is last qu- last what part is of this scary, question. Dude? He also Saint Chris said, uh, "Could I get a quick birthday shout out? You guys are awesome. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday. birthday Yo, anymore. bro! Happy fucking birthday, man! I posted this question. How old are you and shit? We can actually sing the happy birthday song. Now. Many happy returns you to sure? you and yours. Yeah. It's Wait. public domain again. Happy happy birthday from all of us to you. Not that one. All right, happy birthday. happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you for listening. Happy birthday. We um, Thank you for the question. Um, and I think that's all we have time for, question-wise, we need to wrap this show up. So thank you guys for all your questions. Mm. We got a lot of questions today. I had to skip a few, even though it was posted late. It was posted this morning. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll get the the post up for next episode. If you didn't, if I didn't get around to it, you're welcome to leave a question for next episode. Patreon.com slash 4player. If you're a patron, that's where you can leave the questions. Um, and we're going to have some changes coming to the patreon campaign here shortly we just there's gonna be some change we have, to have, a, we have here. to have a conversation about it first in the meantime one, one thing i'd recommend everybody doing is joining our discord we uh, we recently started a community discord it's discord.gg slash four player if you could someone post a link in chat that would be wonderful uh it's pretty much like having twitch chat in your pocket at all times um, and it's very and active it's very very active and you can also in addition to talking and hanging out and meeting new people from the community you can also chit chat with us as well so dude ape, apes so, anus or whatever his name you should get in, frozen you should, anus you should get in there jack i don't know what that what you just said okay sorry. well <laughs> I'll, I'll listen to the recording man i was just looking at frozen anuses whatever his name is comment ape escape was more of my shit than mario 64 fuck yeah ape escape was awesome ape escape is really good i mean i don't think sorry, i don't want to go back in this i don't think it best mario 64 but ape escape is really dope it is all right um, so now we're going to wrap up the show with the four-player minute. So we have five people in the cast. I'll go first. Be, can we keep it? Let's, let's My fuck you. Go quickly. Goes to Valkyria Azure Revolution, whatever that fucking yeah. game is called. Mother fucking fuck, fuck, fuck balls. Fuck you, Sega. Fuck you, everyone involved. So I was listening to some podcasts post-TGS, and I heard from multiple sources that it's like a fucking Muso game. Oh shit! Really? Jesus Christ! Oh, they killed it. Uh, fuck. 
My thank you, slash fuck you, my thank you, though, goes to Kenton, who gifted me a copy of the early access version of Divinity Original Sin 2. Um, which, I didn't want to play the early access version, because... You know, it'd take a lot of time, and the game's not even done yet. But um, I will be previewing the game tomorrow on my stream, early in the day probably, um, just to kind of give it a look, show it off, you know, but I don't want to get too sucked in because the game is not actually done yet. Um, my hype... So thanks, Kenton. My uh, my hype goes to... Uh, I, it's not a hype for me, per se. It's a hype for everyone else. I'm going to hype up the Duke Nukem uh, 3D remastered version that comes oh, with yeah. a new episode with eight new levels in it. Um, is it eight? Eight new levels? Something like that. Eight new levels. Uh, here's the thing, guys. You can play a lot of shooters this year. Some of them are even great, like Doom 2016. But there's not many shooters ever that are as good as Duke Nukem 3D. If you have not played this game, there's nothing about this game that does not stand the test of time. You can absolutely go back and play it. And I'm just pleading for all of you. Like, there's a lot of shooters coming out this year. The, if, if you've not actually played it, Duke Nukem 3D might actually that be the true. best. And, and I, I really, really do mean that. Because I dabbled in Duke Nukem 3D back when I was younger. And I played, like, all... I mean, I only played the first episode or whatever. The The... It's it's, I played it during night in in its entirety and the bonus episode during 1996 month and I I, as a grown ass man, I seriously believe it's one of the best shooters ever made. It, it really is, yeah. and it, and it absolutely holds up. Sprite work top notch, level design top notch. Get that game. It's probably gonna have the best level design of anything you play this year. So I mean, you've not played it before, and it'll probably be one of the best things you play this year. Uh, and my sweat. I'm gonna get it. Give it to Gears Four, mostly not not because I'm worried about Gears Four, but because I'm worried I might pick it up and actually play it. I've uh, I I finished Gears of War One. I've played half of two. I never played three or Judgment. Hmm. Uh, yet just yesterday, last night, I played like an hour and a half of Gears of War One with Malia. I've been that is so weird. I've been struggling to find a good co-op game. I, I set it up through System Link. I played some System Link Gears of War That's a lot of with hassle. Malia. I think we're going to play tomorrow night, too, on the feed. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a fine game. And I guess I'm going to play through some Gears and then get hyped for Gears of War 4. Maybe that's something I'll do. I don't know. Would she be interested in something like Streets of Rage or Turtles in Time or something like that? Yeah, there's, there's not much to those games. I, I mean, know, that, that's the it, right? reality, though. You know, you spend an afternoon, you get through it, you have a good time. But those those, those games are, are know, rad. Like, like, Turtles in Time is rad, but they're kind of paper thin. Sure, you know? they're like the prostitute games. You know, you get through it in like an hour and you're done. And <laughs> you get what you need out of it and you have a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You can throw turtles. There's a boss where Shredder is shooting at you, and he's in the foreground. Mm -hmm. And you and throughout the entire game, you've been like grappling dudes and throwing them into the screen, and it's a cool effect. Throwing foot soldiers like into, into the, the screen, camera, kind of thing. That's into, cool. into the camera. But in this boss fight, you actually have to do that to damage Shredder who's That's in cool. the foreground. I'm really yeah. looking forward to it. It's fucking it. dope. Brad, thank you for it. keeping it under a minute. Well, um, I mean, I had shit to sure. say. That's the point of the four-player minute. If you take away the point of the four-player minute, then why do we do it? I mean, the point was to do it under a minute, but, you know. That was never the point. I invented it because I ripped it off from another podcast that actually spent way longer than we do on their... Because it, it was a joke. They called it, like, their minute or whatever, and it was never a minute. All right. So, trade secrets. Spiritually, really we, are doing, we are doing it correctly. It's comedy. All right, Jack. You ready? Yeah. Uh, go. Thank you. Obviously, goes to you guys as always for having me over. It's been you. Good. You always have a built-in thank you. Yeah, I know. I know. But still. but that's okay. We love it. We Most love of my stuff ever. is hype. Uh, hype. I'm gonna give it to Sonic Mania. I'm super hyped for the Sonic Mania game. It looks fucking I awesome. Does. It does. I did not see coming. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And uh, he is British. They love, they love <laughs> what does Sonic. That mean? 
They love Sonic. They love Sega. That, that's a well-known stereotype. But this is like yeah, this is like <laughs> Sonic Four, dude. This is like the Sonic I've been waiting well, for like nineteen years. Yeah, no, but that doesn't count. Why don't you that, go that eat one, some one. fish and chips and Sonic the actually, Hedgehog, British actually, person? <laughs> that's actually, that actually all changed after Brexit. Oh, yeah, we, oh, sure. we prefer a much more dignified so now, kind like, of Nintendo patriotic. Europe doesn't. Oh, that was actually Nintendo. a cru- that was actually the, that was a crux of the decision making oh. process and that whole thing. <laughs> So, yeah, my hype is going There's to go to Sonic so- Mania. The Sonic supporters and the non-Sonic supporters. My other, my other hype is going to go to Yakuza <laughs> 6. Yakuza 6? My other hype to Yakuza 6, I saw some, they've been a, anyone who knows me, I'm a huge Yakuza fan. They put out a shit ton of new trailers and stuff. They put out, like, all the mini games and stuff they're going to put out for it, and it looks hilarious. It's going to be the final one with Kazuma in it, and it's probably going to be pretty fucking emotional. Because a lot of stuff happens in it, and it looks pretty heavy. So I'm lo- looking forward to that. Um, in 2018, end of this year, because I'm getting the Japanese version. Oh, uh-huh. and then and another hype, I guess, would be for February, because I'm going to get Yakuza Zero in English this time. That's a lot. Of, that's again. a lot of Yakuza. It is. I like that series a lot. And yeah, what's the other ones? Fuck you. I don't have any other fuck yous. To be honest, I'm. A fuck, Did you ever play that? Full of hype. Fuck you, free person. Did you ever play that <laughs> Yakuza game on PSP? The I've got them, but I haven't played them. There's a full English trans- uh, translator's patch now, though. A patch? Huh? That patch is in English. Yeah. Oh, wow. It might be worth playing. Apparently, it's made by the same guys that did Def Jam. Of all people, what? Def Jam people made a Yakuza game. Wow. Two That's Yakuza games. That's really strange. Wow. Weird. It fits. It's fighting games. Yeah. Chris Davis. My four player minute starts now? Yes. Okay. Uh, my hype this week actually goes towards Titanfall 2. Because uh, they revealed some interesting stuff about the PC today. All the options that you can do and the PC requirements, but they showed off that attrition is coming back, and that was like the be- the the main multiplayer mode of the game, which was fantastic. And everybody was afraid that it was getting replaced or thrown out. No, it's actually coming back, and I can't wait to play it. Do you think that might that have been a reaction to the definitely beta? part no. of the plan the whole time? <laughs> no, evidently they've been teasing it for a couple weeks now. Uh, my sweat. Also goes to Titanfall 2 because EA still hasn't fucking delayed the game like it needs to be because it comes out the week after Battlefield 1, and that's pretty much sending it to die, in my opinion. And that game deserves a fucking chance. So if they delay it, what are they uh, going to delay it to? February? They're going to send yeah. it to die there, I mean, too. No, no, no. I mean, that, I, I think, it I, I think early doomed. next year is a good place for Titanfall 2. Yeah. I really hope that that campaign I thought, I thought is so something too. like substantial and not just like this throwaway five hour supposedly, running gun Call of Duty campaign. Supposedly it's like a buddy cop thing and evidently the writing is supposed to be pretty good for it. Sure, no. but but I, but you see what I'm saying, right? Like yeah. I, I want it to be something substantial. Yeah, no, I get it. I Call mean, of Duty campaigns these days are not substantial. I want to do I want to agree with you, Brad, on early 2017 being a good spot for it until I saw everything that's already been delayed into early 2017. And yeah, but it just... doesn't matter. It's not going to compete against Call of Duty and Battlefield. Yeah. That yeah. will kill it. That is true. It, it, nothing coming out in early 2017 is as bad as those two games for this game. Even Resident Evil? So I'm, I'm sure I mean, it'll it, do fine against, different markets. against this Resident Evil I just game. Feel like by the way, by the way, oh, sorry. I feel like it's going to do as well as Battleborn did when it launched right up against fucking Overwatch. It's just going to be just you fucking mean, decimated. You mean not good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, c- can we say uh, there was some new Resident oh, Evil Seven but, footage? Do you, do you realize? Do you know where your microphone is right now? It, is is it okay to say that like the footage we're seeing of Resident Evil Seven is Resident Evil Seven now? Because there's been this long time thing of like this is just tone. We don't know what no, this we, is no, going to be. Been sh- they've been showing, yeah, this is footage. Resident okay, okay. Now, You're the only one PS4 of this group Pro that footage. has been thinking that it's not seven. It's PS4 Pro footage. This no, is no, like, no, no, no. This no. isn't Resident Evil. This is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm okay with that. That no, was being de- used no. as an excuse. The footage, to like, the footage they're showing is Resident Evil Seven. The demo that we've been playing is not part is of the tonal, actual is game. It's a tonal demo. But I mean, pe- there were people out there who were who were saying that it could be completely different than this, and. I, it looks no. like that's very much the what Resident we, Evil. I experience. think what we played in the demo won't be in the final game, but the character and you know the character and stuff probably very well will be. I, I mean, mean, the guy that the hits demo you with doesn't the pipe have or whatever. The is, demo doesn't have any combat. Well, neither. Still, none of the shit they sh- they have shown outside of like a split second in a trailer is firing a gun. Is 
showing I know, gunplay. And, I, and this is what I'm saying. I don't think they're going to show much of that at all before the game comes out, which I'm totally for. I think this which, would be. I, I don't. I want to go. Gameplay, I, honestly, gunplay at all. This would I'm be a, the a I, in isolation. I've already decided I'm going to play the game. I'm excited to play the game. I kind of want to go into it blind, as blind as possible yeah, at this point. Absolutely. So I hope they don't really show any. I don't really. I hope they don't really answer any other questions about the game before it comes out. At this point, I just want to. I want to see what it's like to go into a fucking triple A game like this, fucking blind. Yeah, I, I'm. That I'm never honestly, happens. Fuck, that's another one of my hypes. Two four seven. Fuck it. Thank Texas you, Texas Chainsaw Sorry. Massacre. The game. <laughs> Chris Davis. My, my we've thank, we've hijacked my, it. My thank you this week goes towards uh, Tiny Build, who sent me the code for a Cluster Truck. It's a delightful game, and it's one. I genuinely am looking forward to, and I'm really glad that I've been able to play it a week early. Cool. Definitely got another sale out of it. It's, it's it really out. stinking good. Uh, and I really don't have a fuck you to send out this week. Let's just go ahead and send it out to Konami. Yeah. Because, you know, they're, be just, they're Konami. And they're, just in general. Yeah. Uh, Crispy, would you like to do Yes, one? I would, as a matter of fact. Here oh. we go. My four-player minute begins Take a microphone now. and pipe, talk pipe, pipe, pipe. My hype is for Dishonored 2 because fuck you guys. That game looks cool. My sweat is sure no for the fact that... Yeah, I know. <laughs> My sweat is for the fact that, like, I haven't touched ASX in a couple weeks, and I'm, like, not feeling the pull to you go back. And I was, like, really into it. it. I was really into it, and I'm bouncing so hard off of it right now. Yeah, I don't know what Nancy couch Nobody there. has bounced harder off ASX than I have. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Again. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I, I just, like, find a better time for it. Like, I just, you know... because my life isn't cool? Yeah, he's so not cool. Dude, the John Wick 2 poster? No, he's cool. Keanu Reeves looks like Adam Jensen in it. That's cool. That's he does. Cool. By the cool. way, he needs to get uh, his finger off that trigger. My my fucking uh my fucking wit Oh, what am I on? Thank you. Hype sweat, you're on hype, thank you or hype. fuck you. My thank my thank you goes to Jack for being here tonight. Thanks for filling in for me, bud. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's very rare that Actually, the person who was filling in for Oh, he's filling in for Nolan. Chris Davis is Never mind. I, I need that. Yeah, back. we'll take that back. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you, Chris Davis, for filling in for me, even though I'm here now. Uh and my fuck you for the week goes to Palmer Community. Lucky because Turns out he's a fucking asshole who supports hey. Trump, and hey. that's fucking terrible. Hey. And all you Trump. guys, hey. and all you guys who didn't use your fuck yous of the week for that guy are hey. complicit racists. Hey. Are we in the fuck <laughs> yous as well? <laughs> I'll say this. Touche. On the podcast I've heard him on, he seems like a nice Dude, ha- have you have you started the new? Yeah, he's a nice. Have you started the new Destiny racist. Destiny DLC yet? <laughs> huh? Des- Destiny oh, DLC? Rise of Iron. No. You don't been in on that at all? No, my, my fucking squad isn't playing anymore. They all moved over to Overwatch, though. So. Mm. If they go back, I might end up buying it, but, like, come on, I don't buy Destiny fucking... I don't buy fucking Destiny you were, you were expansions the, the week of launch. You were the what do I look like, Destiny, some kind of fucking noob? You are the biggest Destiny champion I, going. I'm tempted, to, I'm tempted to name this episode the Complicit Racism Show or something, but I feel like that might turn some people off. <laughs> all right, uh, my four-player minute starts now. My sweat goes to near Automata. Uh, for a lot of the reasons we discussed, just because they've shown a lot of combat. They haven't shown enough of the stuff outside of the combat, which is what I'm genuinely more interested in. I want to I want to make sure the rest of that experience is like up to my standards as far as what I expect from a near game. I know it's not probably not going to be like an open world game like near was, but like I want to make sure the characters, the, the, the there's quests, there's you know NPCs, there's things to do other than just go into these big warehouses and fight a bunch of fucking robots. I hope it's more to it than that. Um, my uh, my uh, hype goes to uh, I want to get to Recore because I haven't been playing I haven't been playing much of anything this week. In fact, I'm in kind of a rut. I haven't really felt like playing games this week. But after talking about Recore at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the show, I'm I kind of want to jump back into that. So there's my hype. Uh, my fuck you goes to Sega for uh, teasing this Alien Isolation VR. Which I played two at two E threes ago, for like two or three minutes, and yes, it was terrifying, and yes, it was kind of cool, but that just means they're not putting that money into developing a sequel. To Which they you don't to know do. that you probably don't know aren't. That. They probably aren't. I feel like if they were if they were doing that, we probably would. But they're heard doing of it Sonic now. Mania. I will. I will. <laughs> I will gladly voluntarily recant my fuck you of the week at Sega. Whenever they announce Alien Isolation two, because I want that. Somebody write this down. I want that. I will gladly do it because that what is. What is he gonna do? There is there is Recant no game out testament. there I can think of that I want a sequel to more than Dude, Alien, Alien Isolation. Isolation was the best game of it. Well, like didn't Alien Even Isolation more than Prey? included sequel? I want Alien Isolation two more than I want Prey, Prey two or whatever the fuck it is. No, no, no. I mean Prey two. 
Yeah. The sequel to Prey. You would rather have Not more this of new a game, game you already experienced than have Prey 2? Yes. 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 You know what would be great is if in Alien Alien Isolation 2, you're hiding from not one alien, but an alien and a predator. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, Crispy. What if you got your dream and it was a sequel to Alien, alien Isolation? Alien and a predator. All, like, instead of like... The first game, it was kind of you know, it was it was more che- like it was like for kids, and it started with the snowball fight and it was on a handheld. Hey, can you talk into your microphone like a like a? He's adult? talking about Final Fantasy Tactics for the GBA. Final Fantasy Tactics two. What, what if Silent <laughs> Hills? <laughs> what if Silent Hills would have been an Alien Isolation clone? I don't even know what that means, Jack. Well, Resident Evil <laughs> Seven. My Alien my thank clone. you of the week goes to Jack, not only for being here but for. Reinvigorating my desire to play Final Fantasy VI. You should. Yeah. It's, you might have heard it's a pretty awesome game. I've sort of heard, and I've been I've wanted to go back to it for a while, but I might actually try doing that. That would be a soon. great. I'm gonna sneeze. Choice. I, honestly, I think you'd prefer it over Chrono. Trigger. I will admit, the first couple of hours that I've been playing it, it's just been every time I, I get I just in a gotta fight, get over that hump it, in the first few hours. Yeah. You know, every battle, the first couple of hours has just been me holding the button, fight, 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 win. What that if, sounds what compelling. If, what if? <laughs> uh, what if this is gonna be crazy? Oh God! Talking to the microphone. Oh, he's touching I'm t- they me. They can fucking hear me. He's touching okay. me. What if, beca- in the lead up to Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts 15, 15. yeah, Kingdom Hearts, <laughs> Final Fantasy Kingdom Hearts edition, um, we all play through Final Fantasy six. Have you ever played through it? No. Nick and Crispy haven't. Is it? Is he's it, playing it now. I'm supposed to play it because it won the poll. Is what if we why all six? play Final Fantasy? Is it why six? Why specifically six? Because it's one of the because best it, in the series. Because it's kind of happening here. And, it's, and there's a lot of us like, who like, haven't like, played I, it. I did a poll as to which Final Fantasy they wanted me to play in the lead up to Final Fantasy 15, and uh, six won. Well, I would be I mean, okay with this. Um, magic is happening right now, folks. Why are magic you sure? Have you you've never played it? I mean, I've never played it. I've never. Are you a not JRPG person? I mean, I play JRPGs rarely. He you plays are scum. He. he <laughs> I don't have time for a JRPG. Yeah. No, I, I know what you mean. I, know I think it would be a he really played Lost dope. Odyssey. Wait, not just that. I but Lost it was Odyssey. even on the Patreon poll for, for Revival Best Club. game on the yeah. console. What, what goddamn stream? I have to look at it. Is, yeah. is, um, is Final Fantasy VI a deep and compelling fantasy story? Yes. Well, it's kind of got the Dude, fantasy blended with There's sci-fi. magic mechs. Dude, there's like 20 yeah. characters in that yeah. goddamn game. There's magic mechs. I, I was meeting a new character like every <laughs> hour. It was crazy. <laughs> it's it's so good. I'm in. I'm that in. look of wonder. I'm, I'm fucking... I'm in. It's homework, guys. I'm in. And you got to do GTA as well. Oh. Why'd you have to uh, say the well, word I, homework? I plan to. This, this is a great time for me to be picking up fantasy games. So yeah, I'm in. All right. FF6. I'm going to go ahead and close out the show then with you that. That's a great. A train. That's a great note to what? end on. God damn it. Su- God you damn it! Suplex of train. Yes, you, yes. We've had this conversation tonight it? already. Everybody, no. shut up for a second. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Twitter handles. Uh, yes, everybody. I mean, yeah, we don't do that very often, but sh- yeah. What's your Twitter? You, you have the greatest Twitter handle in the world, Jack. No, he doesn't. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> At creamy elephant. You know what's fucking hilarious though? It's fucking great. The, I listen to a radio show in the morning, local Austin one, and they have the thing where you ask questions and shit, and they do trivia and all that shit. I submitted some questions and some uh, just general comments and stuff. Guy read it out on the air like three, four times in a row. Whoa! He's like, the guy was like laughing. The DJ was like, yeah, we got a, we got a comment from a creamy elephant. And he's just so awkward, dude. He's, he's fucking hilarious. It is, a, it is a great name. I mean, it could be a lot worse. It could be creaming elephant. Oh! Dude, I'm changing my Twitter handle, dude. That's fucking <laughs> great. That's, that's great. No, wait, uh, that was already taken, so. Oh, my God. Creamy elephant. I don't want to see what that account tweets about. It's just, right. a, it's just a white creamy elephant. Pachyderm cream. I am at Nick, Nick H0630. Crispy, what's yours? I am at Inspector Chris. That's Chris with a K. So it's... At symbol I N S P E C T O R K R I S. Thank you, Crispy. S. Has there ever been a K H R I S? Somebody, I swear to God, the other day I told somebody my name was Chris with a K, and they wrote K H R I S, and I was like, like they were dead to me. They were dead to me. Right. <laughs> I'm I'm at folder Brad. Folder Brad, like the Brads you see in a folder. Yes, that was the idea. And <laughs> my Twitter picture used to be the Brads. So there was no confusion. We still don't get it. Uh, Chris Davis, what's and your... I'm at Slacker Chan. Slacker Chan. 
That's actually a pretty good uh, name for like a weeaboo. I still haven't decided. <laughs> I still haven't. Not that you're a weeaboo, but I'm saying like if I was a weeaboo, that would be a pretty dope. I still haven't decided name. on our new Twitter handle. I've been driving me crazy for like a year now. Slack cocoon. Dude, we need to put, put a poll up on Twitter. Dude. I use that account too. There's actually someone made someone made a forum post where they were throwing ideas. There I need to look at that again. Anyways, thank you guys for listening. Fourplayernetwork.com is the website. Of course, if you have any thoughts on anything we talked about on the show and you would like us to uh, address them at the beginning of the next episode, be sure to leave a comment on the site when we get this post up. Um, 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 what else? Don't forget TwitchCon next weekend. Brad and I are going to be there. Brad's going to be on the Twitch OG panel. OG. Oh, October 1st, Saturday, October 1st at 10 a.m. I will be there for moral support. So if you're there, come say hi. I'll be, I'll be lonely. Find me an ORG. Find me an ORG. I don't know. A more ori- There's not going to be original-er? any time. There's originaler. not gonna, There ain't going to be no time for an ORG, Brad. Or-G. We're only going to be there for like 18 hours. Uh, anyways, if you're in if you're in San Diego, you're gonna be at TwitchCon. Come say hi. If not, we're gonna be streaming the, the panel, I believe, on Twitch. We should probably double check that, but I think they're I think they're streaming it. Um, and of course, you can join our Discord. It's discordgg slash four player. It's join like having Twitch chat in your pocket, and you can talk with us too. It's pretty cool. So if someone could post a link and chat to that. That would be great. I chat while I'm driving. <laughs> you shouldn't be That's doing, don't do that. safe. You shouldn't don't be do doing that. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. We will see you next Thursday night for another episode. Bye. Peace out. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.